Day one of the seventh annual Three Rivers Classic is in the books. I'm Matt Geica with RMU Media as the Colonials fell seven to four to Brown in game two of day one up here at the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex. It was a night of firsts in a couple of different ways. Number one, it's our program's first game ever in this building. And number two, it was the first meeting ever for the Colonials against Brown. And RMU came out all guns a-blazing, going up two to nothing after one period before Brown scored four in the second and then eventually skated away with the victory. Head coach Derek Schooley for the Colonials lamented the lack of consistency even though he praised the way his team came out for this one. You know, we were really, really good in the first period. We were outstanding, put a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm and a, and a lot of heart. Uh, they came out and took it to us, uh, kind of the reverse, and, but they scored more than we did and uh, then uh, we just, we, we battled, we competed, we didn't quit. And then, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we just dug ourselves too big of a hole in the second period. But uh, there were good things. We're still a young team. We still have to keep our focus for 60 minutes. And right now, we are, uh, we're a 35, 40 minute team. And if we can, we can turn it to, around, you saw the, the glimpse of what we could do. I mean, we got 11 freshmen. And, uh, that was a big for Granny Bear to, to get back in the score sheet. He's had uh, been hurt a little bit and been adjusting to the game, but uh, three goals for him is a uh, you know a good uh, a good start. But uh, we just need to be consistent more for 60 minutes. Not to bury the lead too much. Grant Ebear, freshman center, scored three goals for his first NCAA hat trick. He had the Colonials only two goals into the third period, and then he scored another one on a drop pass from Alex Tange to make it 4-3 and keep things very interesting here up in Cranberry. Eber credited his line mates, including Tanj, for putting him in good spots to shoot the puck. My uh, line mates are excellent tonight. They put the puck in the stick pretty easy. I've had tapped it in, so it wasn't hard. But uh, yeah, my team, my um, uh, line mates, uh, Perky and uh, Tanj, passing the puck there and made it easy for me. Well, RMU won't win the Three Rivers Classic this time around, but they have a reputation, certainly, in college hockey for taking home the Confluence Cup. They've done it three times in the six previous tournaments, and Brown coach Brendan Wittett said that was in his Bears' minds as they took the ice tonight. It may not have been great from the start, but they did push back in the second. We were not anywhere close to what we need to be um, in terms of what we want with Brown hockey um, in that first period, but uh, I thought as the game went on, so more and more of that. We just, uh, with a young team, there's, there's some consistency issues um, that you'll have. Um, we had a good week of practice. I thought the guys were ready. And uh, again, I tribute to Robin Morris. I thought they jumped us pretty good early, and I knew they had energy. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's their, their tournament and, and um, in conjunction with the Penguins. And, um, you know, I know they, they've won a lot of these championships and they've played a lot of championship games, so it was not going to be easy. Um, to get by them in that realm. If you're into bright sides beyond the individual accolades of Grant Ebear, the Colonials get a great chance to prove their medal tomorrow night. It'll be a five o'clock face-off against the number one team in the nation, the St. Cloud State Huskies. The Huskies are gonna be ticked after losing seven to two to number 14 Union in the first game here today. But for RMU, it's their first chance to play a number one ranked team in eight years. We hope to see you down there. It's at PPG Paints Arena as the venue shifts in this tournament for Saturday. One last time from Cranberry, this is Matt Geico. Number 10 on our top 15 moments list is a true team triumph as the Colonials overwhelmed a pair of ranked opponents in the 2015 Three Rivers Classic. Not only did a deep RMU team net 11 goals in the two games, 15 players scored at least a point, and the goalie tandem of Terry Schaefer and Dalton Isaac each presided over a victory. We just had a special team that year. It was a really deep team, and uh, you know, anytime you can get it four lines out there rolling without much of a drop uh, from one to four, it's, uh, it makes a big difference. After senior Schaefer stopped 52 shots against number 14 Penn State in the opening round, junior Isaac held the forward against number six UMass Lowell in the championship as RMU overcame a 3-1 deficit. With five points in the event, Pittsburgh's Zach Lynch joined Schaefer on the all-tourney team, and RMU went on to win 24 games for the second straight season. When the lights are brightest, RMU tends to shine uh, shine the brightest as well. Uh, I remember the locker room was just always excited for an opportunity to get to play against these kinds of teams, and we really always performed well in the biggest stages.
Here at the Army Island Sports Center, I'm Matt Geica with head coach Derek Schooley. Time to talk pucks once again. It's the Men's Hockey Weekly and an important week, coach, with the Three Rivers Classic coming up. But before we get to that, you come off the holiday break with a split at AIC up in, uh, in Massachusetts. You score three goals in both of those games, too, against the second place team. Feel like that's a pretty positive outcome to start the second half? Well, I thought we were really good to open the, the, our first game. Um, I thought we were really good, and as the game went on, I thought they took it to us a little bit. And in the, and in the third period, they were uh, it was back to an even game again, and they got a bounce at the end, and we didn't uh, we didn't uh, get a penalty kill that we needed right down the stretch. And um, good hockey game, um, good first weekend out. We got a, a nice. Uh, uh, I think we kind of stole a game with 17 shots on goal. Francis Murat was outstanding. I thought Luke Lynch and Alex Tonge were, were uh, big-time leaders for us uh, offensively and uh, big-time uh, play by uh, the, th the two of them and Eric Israel to get us the game-winning goal. So, um, yeah, you're always happy to go on the road and get a, a split, and uh, we got to be ready to go here, and we got to continue to get better. Yeah, this is different this week. Typically, with the Classic, it's right after the holiday. This time you get two games. Maybe get your feet back under you in game action. Alex Tonge seemed to think on Sunday that was an advantage. How do you feel about it as a coach? Well, it's a, it's a weird time because you got New Year's and New Year's Day and all thrown in the mix, and, and then we're uh, coming back, and uh, you've got some really quality teams coming in. And Brown's playing very well right now. They just beat Army. Uh, you got uh, St. Cloud, number one in the nation, and then you got Union that's been consistent in the top 15 all year. So these are some good hockey teams that are coming into to the Three Rivers Classic. So hopefully uh, uh, we can continue the success we've had in, in this tournament because it's uh, always fun for our, our guys, our student athletes, and we're ready to go, hopefully. Yeah, what's the energy like on a week like this? It's a short week, but like you said, it's one thing that you look forward to every year, no doubt about it, with this tournament. Well, I think the energy is going to pick up as the week goes on. We've got the banquet, and uh, uh, the teams are going to start coming into town, and we're going to see uh, uh, union practice and here at our rink and, uh, uh, tomorrow, and then the, you get the banquet on Thursday. And so I think it's, a, it's one of those things, I think as the week goes on, the energy is going to pick up, and we know this is always a big deal for our university and, and for us uh, the, in the hockey community in the city of Pittsburgh. So I think the energy is going to get going, and uh, we've had a, we had a really good practice today, and uh, uh, we had a uh, uh, get our legs uh, adjusted uh, after a day off on, on New Year's Day. So it, uh, uh, tomorrow will be also a good day, and as I said we'll get uh, the energy cranked up as the weekend goes on. You've won the Confluence Cup three out of six times. This tournament has been competed. You've joked after a couple of the wins that it might be tough to get some quality teams in here because they're afraid of getting upset, but you did it again. Uh, you do have, like you mentioned, with Union and St. Cloud State, two ranked opponents, and, and Brown coming off a nice win. How much of a point of pride is that for you as a program to, to keep bringing these strong fields into Pittsburgh? Well, you want to keep having these uh, good exposing uh, college hockey to people and uh, the fans and get top ranked teams coming in and you never know where they're going to be ranked when you get them but you always want to try to to uh, get teams that have great uh, histories and have done very well. St. Cloud was number one in the nation last year in the N going into the NCAA tournament so you knew that they were going to have a, a strong team. Union's always been strong. They won the national championship. Uh, Brown's got the history and the pedigree of an Ivy League school so you knew when we scheduled these that there'd be a chance for them to be good hockey teams and and here we are uh, getting a top 15 team and a number one team in the nation. Army will open up against Brown in the classic up at the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex in Cranberry. That'll be the nightcap on Friday as it'll be St. Cloud State and Union at five o'clock. Colonials and Brown for the first time ever in the two teams respective histories at eight and then we'll see how things shake out for the consolation and the championship games at PPG Paints Arena on Saturday. For Coach Schooley, I'm Matt Geica. We'll talk to you next time. Here at the Army Island Sports Center, ready for the Three Rivers Classic. I'm Matt Geica, talking to senior captain Brandon Watt. And Brandon, a short week coming off the trip to AIC where you guys split. Do you feel like that's maybe a good thing because you can keep that momentum going? Yeah, I mean, it was nice to, uh, to get a couple of games in early as soon as we came back from break. Um, nice to get our legs under us, especially after we had a little bit of a longer break over Christmas this year. 
Um, so, you know, usually like we play the three rivers as soon as we get back. So I think uh, the trip to AAC definitely helped us get back and into the swing of things before we start the tourney. Yeah, I was talking to Alex Tonj after the, the Sunday game up there in Massachusetts. He said he thought it might be an advantage to get those two games and feel like you're back in the swing of things. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, in the past years, we came back and those were the first games we've played, um, especially playing teams from out of conference. You know, it's always kind of a, a different game. So it was nice to get... Uh, down to Springfield for uh, a road trip and get a couple of games under us. Well, so far this season, including out there at Springfield, it's been a very successful defensive season for your team. It's a departure from what the Colonials are, are used to being about. Why do you think uh, the D has been such a, a lockdown factor this year? Uh, I think it all starts with our goalie, Frankie. Um, you know, sometimes I think this year we've, uh, we haven't exactly found a way to score goals like we have in the past. Um, so in order to win hockey games when you're not putting up, you know, four or five goals a game is playing sound defensively. Um, and I think down the stretch it's certainly going to help us, as, uh, you know, as long as we continue to find ways to score goals. I think our power play is starting to click a little bit more now. So the fact that we uh, can bear down defensively will definitely help us down the stretch. That's been a, a different type of a season for you, obviously, as team captain. That's an increased responsibility. But also you had some injuries to battle through, too. So... How do you feel where you're at emotionally here? How have you kept your confidence up as, as now you're working your way back into things? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, kind of been the same way for the past two years for me, uh, battling some injuries. But, you know, I think uh, it's been good that the coaches have supported me the whole time. And, you know, the teammates have helped me, uh, helped me keep my confidence up. Um, you know, kind of sad to say, but I guess I'm kind of used to it by now. You know, just working my way back in and uh, trying to find my legs and whatnot, especially coming off an injury. Now, last thing for you, the Three Rivers Classic, you've been on the winning side, and you've also seen another team hoist the Confluence Cup. How important is this weekend? Because it's right in the middle of the season, it's not Atlantic hockey play, but you get a chance to put your skills and your team's ability on display for the, for the entire nation, really. I think it's cool. Um, it's definitely a good experience for us. We get to play teams that you know, we don't normally see. Uh, especially teams coming from out of conference. Um, and I think it's also a huge turning point in the season, too. The first two years we were, uh, we were able to win, which was nice, and it kind of brought our team closer. And even last year we kind of learned uh, a little bit about our team. And I think the past three years this tournament really kind of defined who we were in terms of you know, bringing us all together for, uh, for the stretch drive. Let's come see the Colonials. The Muse Sports Complex in Cranberry, 8 o'clock. They have the nightcap on Friday against Brown University, then St. Cloud State or Union the second day at PPG Paints Arena. Can't get enough of your favorite colonial sports? Follow RMU Athletics on social media at RMU Athletics on Twitter, RMU Athletics on Instagram, and be sure to like our page on Facebook at Robert Morris University Athletics. Go Colonials! Hey there, Colonial fans! It's time to meet our Student Athletes of the Week, sponsored by People's Gas. This week we celebrate Malik Padaway from men's basketball and Alex Tonge from men's hockey. Senior forward Malik Pedway finished up non-conference play with a double-double in the Colonials' huge blowout against Hood on Saturday with 18 points and 10 rebounds. He shot .889 from the field, helping the Colonials achieve their second highest field goal percentage in program history. Senior forward Alex Tonge scored two goals in the Colonials' 3-1 win over AIC on Sunday with his seventh and eighth goals of the season. Tonja's game winner came just eight seconds into the third period on a breakaway and puts him sixth place on the program's all-time scoring list. Congratulations to our Student Athletes of the Week. For more, visit rmucolonials.com and remember to use the hashtag Colonial Pride. Number nine on our list throws it back to Halloween weekend 2015 when the Colonials invaded Yost Arena, the storied home of the number 10 ranked Michigan Wolverines. After losing a third period lead in the series opener, the senior laden Colonials were determined to get a W in the rematch. Yeah, we just, I mean, we knew we belonged and we knew we had a good group. We were confident that we could play with anyone. And I just think that, that our effort on Saturday night really showed that. I, I mean, there wasn't really even a minute that they were even in the game. RMU did indeed prove its point, scoring three goals in the first period and getting 34 saves from goalie Dalton Isaac in blanking Mighty Michigan. Greg Gibson had three assists to wrap up National Player of the Month honors too, but the confident Colonials took it as just another stride toward their second straight 24-win season. We came every night expecting to win, and we had the, the belief in our room that we were one of the best teams in the country, and I, ju I just think that uh, when we played our game like we did that night, it really showed that we could be.
Now in its 15th season, RMU men's hockey celebrates the 15 greatest moments in program history. The 2016-17 Colonials entered the annual Three Rivers Classic looking for a boost. RMU got that lift, first blanking Ferris State, before coming from behind to whack number 13 Quinnipiac in the championship game. As part of a five-goal rally, senior captain Rob Mann buried the go-ahead goal, then assisted on one of two Timmy Moore tallies in the third. And the Colonials had won their third Confluence Cup, all earned against ranked foes. For us just to play against um, some bigger name schools, you know, it's a good chance to, to showcase yourself. And, um, you know, it's a good chance for the younger guys to see, too, that we're no slouch and can compete with anyone. For all the offense, tourney MVP honors went to freshman goalie Francis Murat who allowed just one goal on 76 shots and a sign of great things to come. From day one, that guy was, you know, calm and collected and played confident. And, um, so, you know, you're not really surprised when you see it, but obviously it's still impressive. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. Hey there, Colonial fans. It's time to meet our Student Athletes of the Week, sponsored by People's Gas. This week, we celebrate Malik Padaway from men's basketball and Alex Tonge from men's hockey. Senior forward Malik Pedway finished up non-conference play with a double-double in the Colonials' huge blowout against Hood on Saturday with 18 points and 10 rebounds. He shot .889 from the field, helping the Colonials achieve their second highest field goal percentage in program history. Senior forward Alex Tonge scored two goals in the Colonials' 3-1 win over AIC on Sunday with his seventh and eighth goals of the season. Tonja's game winner came just eight seconds into the third period on a breakaway and puts him sixth place on the program's all-time scoring list. Congratulations to our Student Athletes of the Week. For more, visit rmucolonials.com and remember to use the hashtag Colonial Pride. Can't get enough of your favorite Colonial sports? Follow RMU Athletics on social media at RMU Athletics on Twitter, RMU Athletics on Instagram, and be sure to like our page on Facebook at Robert Morris University Athletics. Go Colonials! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to TPG Paint Arena for tonight's contest. We have the Robert Morris University Colonials against the St. Cloud State University Huskies in the consolation game here at this year's Three Rivers Classics. I'm Michael Shuley alongside me, Matt Simkovic. Matt, we're in store for a good one tonight. Oh, we sure are, Mike. You know, St. Cloud State currently, yesterday they were the number one ranked team in the nation that lost to put them in the consolation game to Union. Uh, drop them down to number two as UMass takes over in the country, but this is definitely gonna be a good game here today, Mike. Certainly, Matt, we're ready to get underway here in the face-off dot right now. Grant E. Bear to take the draw for the Colonials. The freshman who had a hat trick last night, but it will be St. Cloud that wins the draw. Back to behind the cage now are the Huskies, and they're going to work it up now. Dumping the pack, puck down low. And e. Bear fighting for it on the wall. He'll take a huge shot and go down from Jack Paling. The Paling Twins getting the start here for the Huskies. His brother Nick on the opposite wing. And a turnover there in the offensive zone as Luke Lynch, the Pittsburgh native, gets the turnover, but he unfortunately can't connect on his pass. This will be clear back out to center. Teams jostling for the puck now will end up being dumped back behind the net of Francis Murat, who fields it. and will be taken by his defenseman, Eric Israel. A lot of stretch passes when the Huskies are trying to leave their defensive zone, Mike, really trying to get some offense started up early into the game. Israel will dump this one back, and it is played as Adamo crashing in for the Colonials, tries to push one towards the cage, but unfortunately for Robert Morris, the Huskies regain control of the puck. Here comes St. Cloud now working up from their defensive end. It'll be turned over to the Colonials at their own blue line. Breaking free now is Robert Morris getting the puck, and this shot is deflected high and out of play. And we have our first stoppage of the night at the 18:38 mark. 
at the two games yesterday for each of these teams. A lot of goals given up on both sides, each team allowing seven goals. Do you expect much of the same here in this one? You know, Mike, yesterday the St. Cloud Huskies looked really slow off the start of their game, and they were really never able to pick it back up offensively. So I feel like if they can come out and get their game started and how they usually like to play, obviously you don't get to number one in the country by mistake. So I feel like this might be another high-scoring game as both teams that we have out here are extremely powerful in the offensive zone. With that being said, Matt, the Colonials turnover there gathered by the Huskies. And another interception there by Lalonde, who will dump it in behind the net of the Huskies goaltender, Jeff Smith, who's getting the start here tonight. Working up the wing now for the Huskies, number 15, Miller dumping it down low. Colonials regain the puck, however. You know, Mike, Robert Morris hosting the tournament as always, but this is only the second time that they are not playing for the Confluence Cup trophy. Certainly the Colonials have had success as this shot is blockered away by Marat. Sharp angle shot there. No problem for Francis Marat, though. St. Cloud still with the puck, but an errant pass will find its way all the way back to Smith, who will play it back up the ice. Huskies moving it back into the offensive zone quickly, and Marat will have to come out and slow down the puck again. Horseman mishandles the puck at the wall, but is able to get it out of the defensive zone. The Colonials can regroup. Pass deflected up into the neutral zone. Both teams jostling for the puck. It'll be St. Cloud that knocks it back into the Robert Morris zone, but they will handle it easily. Horseman loses the puck at the blue line. It's turned over. Paling a shot. Saved by Marat, and Marat gets crashed in. It was Jack Paling that hit Marat, and his helmet flies off. Whistle blown here. Francis Marat certainly getting his body hit quite a lot this weekend here. Took a lot of contact in the game yesterday and it's already starting early here tonight. And we're gonna have a penalty. I believe goaltender interference against Jack Paling and the Colonials are gonna have the first power play of the night here. Had several opportunities last night as you can see there on the replay. Marat taking a huge hit. Colonials did have one power play goal early on in the first period yesterday. That was Grant E. Bear's goal. Shot home in the slot, banked it in off the post. Let's see if they can replicate their success from last night. Lynch on the draw for Robert Morris. And the Colonials will win the draw back to the point. Israel over to Tanj. Tanj wheeling down low below the goal line almost. Back up to Israel, over to Loria. The red shirt senior transfer from UMass Lowell two seasons ago. Back to Israel. Cutting in and stops, surveying his options. Back over to Tanj. Tanj driving towards the cage, his shot! Blocked away. Back out to the point to Israel. Over to Lynch. Back to Israel on the give and go. Israel circling down, shot kicked away by the pad of Smith. Another shot wide of the cage. This one will clear out of the zone. It'll be handled by Tanj in the neutral zone. Skates back to his blue line and gets it up to Adamo. Over to Loria. Loria will cut back and hold up the puck. Back down the wall and he'll give it to Luke Lynch. Lynch now will change it with Israel. Israel driving in up front to Loria. Loria spinning backhand. Turned away by Smith. It'll be dumped back to the corner. The Colonials love running that switch from where the defenseman at the point walks down the half wall and is replaced by the wing off the half wall. It really opens up the far side of the ice, as you can see. They love that east to west passing. We mentioned it yesterday, and they're doing it again here early on. Here comes Paling now. Paling a shot up over the blocker of Francis Murat, and the Colonials are going to come back now. And they have some numbers here. Mantenuto with the puck leaves it for Ebert, but it's deflected behind the cage of Smith. Several players battling for the puck down low. Perkusic down there for the Colonials. Six players behind the net on that scuffle there, Mike. The Bear drops it down low to Tanj, looking back for Perkusic. No dice. And he Bear now. We have a whistle. I believe it was played with a high stick by Grant Bear. As you can see on the replay there, Tanj is shot. Colonials generating some opportunities here on the power play. 
15 seconds remaining on the penalty to Paling. On the draw for Robert Morris, Aiden Spilacy. Fortunately for him, the Huskies will maintain control after the draw and clear it down. Spilacy will try to boot it to himself in the neutral zone, but it'll be St. Cloud that emerges with the puck. Marat will lay it off for Brandon McKellian. McKellian will start the rush now. Saucer pass across to Spilacy. Spilacy tries to cut him, but loses it in the neutral zone. Dump behind the net of Marat. Paling has it, trying to find his brother on the opposite wing. Knocked down the defensive zone by Lalonde, and he'll send it up. And here come the Colonials, cutting in on his backhand, but falling down to the ice was Kip Hoffman. Another good opportunity there for the Colonials early. Another stretch pass from the Huskies. They love keeping a guy back at the Colonials D to pull their D back and have them, you have to have a man on him or else it's gonna turn out for breakaways all night. And a shot off the chest protector of Marat. And then it'll be deflected up off a stick and caught by Marat there is St. Cloud finally getting some shots on the cage of Marat. You know, Mike, we keep throwing out that Paling last name, a scratch tonight for St. Cloud State. Number 11, Ryan Paling, because he is currently playing in the World Juniors for Team USA. Of course, Team USA will be taking on Finland tonight in the championship of the World Juniors tournament at 8 o'clock. Good to see three brothers on the same team, pair of twins, line mates. Doesn't make our job any easier, Matt, but what a talented family they are. But unfortunately for them, early on, uh, with Jack Paling taking the penalty, what did you like out of that Robert Morris power play that you saw? You know, something that I really liked that I saw was a lot of patience. They didn't seem to be rushing any of the shot lanes. They weren't afraid to pull up if what they were going for wasn't actually open. Uh, reset up, get back into the position, uh, run that switch again, try and open it up again. And, uh, you know, just persistency, but really, really making sure that um, the lanes are truly open and they're not rushing and giving up, forcing any opportunities they don't have to. We have a face-off now in the Colonial Zone. It'll be Lynch against Nolan Walker on the dot. We have a whistle first. We're going to reset things. Walker kicked out of the draw. In place of Walker will be Micah Miller. Colonials maintain possession after the draw. Tonge gets it at the far wall, or the near wall, rather. Drops it off for defenseman Alex Robert. Sends it up looking for Tonge, but unable to connect on the pass. Comes Walker now, tries to put a move, but can't get past defenseman Jeff Lawson. Ebert with the puck now, trying to get out of the zone. He cannot. Miller still battling to keep the puck in the zone. And it's finally given up to the Colonials. Here comes Lynch. Lynch pulling up, looking for Taj. Taj right in the net, shot off the blocker of Smith. Back behind the cage now for Ebert. Ebert chipping it out front, no dice, as he had Taj in front of the net, unguarded. Back out now for Robert. His name, a scratch tonight. Taken by Meyer, who sends it over to his D partner. Back to Meyer. Meyer looking, sends it up in the neutral zone there. St. Cloud still with possession. Finally dumping it into the far corner. Poked along, but cut off by the Huskies. Huskies still with the puck down low. Swapping with the defenseman, pitching. Shot off the pads of Marat, rebound, and the net comes off its moorings before the shot was taken. The rest I don't believe this is, they're calling it a goal down on the ice. It's from here, I thought the net had come off his moorings before the shot had gone across. Nonetheless, as it stands at the moment, and as you can see on the replay, the net way off its moorings. Morning. The goal is standing, the refs are looking at this one, however. But the net was clearly off as Israel, I believe, hit the deck and knocked the puck off. Or actually, rather, knocked the net off its mooring. Do not expect this one to stand. 
but Matt, we saw our first real glimpse of offensive pressure from the Huskies in this one. What, what did you think about their offensive attack? You know, the Huskies seem to be, for right now, uh, gauging the opponent. Um, so they came out really, really slow yesterday against the Union Dutchman. And uh, offensively, it was, it was a disappointing game for the Huskies, for certain. Um, so with the Colonials, obviously a new, new team, you're going to try to figure out what works against them. So they were able to see them yesterday, um, but coming in today, uh, they seem to just be running some, you know, like we mentioned earlier, stretch passes, some streaking plays, really nothing too cutting edge from the Huskies. They seem to just be coming out, getting a feel for the Colonials' defense, and then they'll probably try and beat that later in the game. And as you can hear there and see, the goal was waved off. Fortunate for Robert Morris. But we are going to have a face-off in the Colonial Zone. It'll be Michael Coyne to take the draw for Robert Morris. Coyne will be opposed by Sam Hetkes for the Huskies. Puck dropped and tied up underneath the centerman. And it'll square it out to Robert Morris. And they'll clear it high off the glass and out of the zone. 12.30 remaining in the first period of play here. No score yet as St. Cloud drives into the corner. Israel knocks his man off the puck. Still battling the corner. Several players from each team. Horseman steps up on the wing and is battled back down. Coyne has it. Coyne pinned against the wall with Israel now. Israel has it taken out from underneath him. The Huskies with the puck. It's Patrick Newell who took it off of Israel. Back in the corner, still St. Cloud doing a great job of holding on to possession in the offensive zone. Good play by Robert Morris to get it out of the zone finally, but St. Cloud regains it and automatically right back up the ice. It's Newell again, cutting back, gets his man to hit the ice. And a shot, he scores! Patrick Newell cutting back into the middle of the offensive zone and putting one over the blocker of Francis Murat. One to nothing Huskies. Aiden Spalacy there, tried to cut back with his man, could not do it, hit the ice, spun out, opened up right in the middle. Newell did a great job walking right into the high slot, changing the angle of the shot and blasting one right by Murad. Great patience by Newell on that one, waiting to get right into the middle of the two face-off circles and ripping a shot over the blocker of Murad, as you can see here on the replay. One to nothing after some great offensive pressure from the Huskies. How will the Colonials respond? The St. Cloud State Bowl scored by number 14, Patrick Newell. Gloria dumps it down deep. It'll be handled by Smith behind his own cage, but it gets past them. Kick back out in front. Spalacy able to get the intercept in a backhand shot off the pad, but not made it. He touched it or not, but it looks like Robert Morris have immediately answered right back. Spalacy, who was beat on the defensive end, turns back around, gets the turnover in the offensive end, puts it on net, and the Colonials get a goal as a result. You know, if you're Spalacy right there, you love to see that. That's really the only way to come out and make up for giving up a goal is to directly be assisted in the next one. Great job by Spalacy, holding it off his defender, protecting the puck on the backhand getting a backhander in there. I'm not sure if Perkusik touched it or not, but nonetheless, this game is tied back up at one after only a few short seconds of a St. Cloud lead. The Robert Morris University goal scored by number four, and Spalacy is the one that is credited with the goal. Did you hear PA announcer? Perkusik will get an assist. But it's St. Cloud with the puck again in the offensive zone, trying to regain their lead. Tonge leaves it, and it's a give and go. Luke Lynch now, one on one. Lynch trying to go through his legs, no dice, and he's shoved to the ice, and he'll slide into the post and knock the net off its moorings again. Nifty little move there by Lynch trying to get past the defender. It almost worked too, if you see there. Just hit his inside skate, and he wasn't able to get a stick on it as the Husky defenseman lays the body into him. And you can see the grin on Lynch's face as he got up off the ice there. He knew it was, he was trying to do something fancy. And it almost paid off. Face off now will come out of the Colonials offensive end. Mantenuto will be up against Walker in the dot. Mantenuto is able to win it back to his defenseman. 
but it's a turnover. Huskies with the puck now down below the net of Marat. Back up to Walker. Walker will dump it back down for Miller, but it'll be fended off by number 23 for the Colonials, Jeff Lawson. Up to Mantenuto now, who gains the red line and dumps it down low. Racing back, trying to get to the puck behind the net of Smith. Skips just over the stick of Adamo. However, the Colonials will regain it and try to send it deep, but it won't work. Israel with it now, sending one to the far corner. Bounce taken by Lalonde, who's cut off immediately. Reverse back around. Looking for the goal scorer, Noel, but Israel's able to come up with it. But unfortunately, he's knocked to the ice. Adamo has it stripped, and it's Noel, and it's two on one back for the for Huskies. Noel's pass, defended nicely, and Francis Morant will get the trickling puck and trap it for a stoppage of play with 9.49 remaining in the first period. You know, Mike, they say you don't want to turn the puck over within either side, five feet of the blue line. And right there you saw Justin Adamo up at the top of the zone, turns the puck over, and it turns out for an easy two-on-one for the Huskies. Plays like that, as far as handing the Huskies opportunities to score, the Colonials are really going to have to limit throughout the night if they want to stay in this game. And Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but good defense by Nolan Schaefer there. On, on back, he was the lone defenseman back for the Colonials, doing enough to create an errant pass there. It was fielded on the backhand, and unfortunately for the Huskies, they were able to get a weak shot off on net. Yeah, you know, that's something that the... Uh, the Huskies offense is probably going to continue doing it. If they're going to give them the easy plays to make all night, if you're the Huskies, they're just going to continue taking them and making them. So that's really something, like we said, that the Colonials are going to have to watch out on tonight. Getting a, getting a lucky break there for sure, but they're going to need to clean up if they want to stay in it. The faceoff now will be in the Colonials' end. Ebear will take it. Opposing Ebear will be Hentges. Henkes won three NHL draft prospects on the Huskies roster. Huskies still with the puck, sending it to the far corner. It will be taken by Newell. Back up top to the point, back to Newell. Skating to the middle of the ice, he has Israel covering him, and the Huskies will turn the puck over, but it will be given right back. Robert Morris struggling to get the puck out of the zone here. Shot down low, pass off a skate and into the padding of Marat. Luckily for the Colonials, it doesn't squeak through and Marat will freeze for another whistle. Matt, we've seen long periods of offensive pressure from this Huskies team in the past, in the first half of this first period. What could possibly be something the Colonials could do to change up this offensive pressure to prevent it? You know, something that the Colonials do really well on a typical night for them is they're a really fast transitioning team. They really do make good time at going from defense to offense, moving down the ice and getting set up effectively. And part of that is all the speed that our roster has on the offense, on the wings uh, specifically. Um, so really just playing their game that they usually can and not changing for the Huskies, I think that would be a good thing. Whenever you're getting pressured, you just want to chip it out and get it out of the zone as fast as you can. And they're usually pretty good at it. So that would be, uh, you know, just keep playing their game right now if, if I'm a Colonial. And we have a stoppage in play here, and it looks like a Colonial is going to be sent to the box. It's going to be Michael Coyne. I believe the call was slashing. Nonetheless, St. Cloud is going to get their first opportunity of the night on the power play. In last night's game against Union, Mike, the first Huskies goal, I believe it was, came very early on into a man advantage. Some pushing and shoving with Israel on the far side of the ice there as the teams look to take the draw. Lynch is kicked out. Alex Tonge will replace him for the Colonials. Still some chattering going down on the ice right now. And we finally have a whistle and a puck drop. Newell will swoop in and take it off the draw for the Huskies. Back up to the point. 
Wrist shot blocked away by it. the Colonials, and it'll be cleared out of the zone. Huskies currently doubling the shots of the Colonials, eight to four on the first. Schultz with the puck now, carrying up for the Huskies, the defenseman. Colonials will regain it though. And this one will be blown dead. As the referee, or the linesman rather, skates over to talk with Israel. The base off is going to come all the way down into the Robert Morris offensive end here. Mantenuto will take the draw for the Colonials. Interesting to see here. On the kill, Lawson and Schaefer, two freshmen on the points for the Colonials. And if you could hear PA and the PA announcer there, there was a change in the Robert Morris goal. It is given to Nick Perkusik. St. Cloud still battling on the power play. Down low, cleared out. But not past the blue line. The Huskies still battling for it down low. Newell up top to Schultz. This one off a skate and out of the zone as Newell's pass was blocked. Schultz now quickly moves it back up the ice. And a shot into the chest protector of Marat and deflected away. Israel comes back with it and he'll send it all the way back around. Nobody home and it'll be held in by Schultz on the far blue line. Back to Israel down below. Israel still jostling and he'll clear this one high off the glass and out of the zone. He'll be back down and handled by Smith. You know, Mike, we said it yesterday, but even early on just throughout the first 12 minutes of this first period, Eric Israel is still demonstrating how much of a 200-foot player he really is on the ice. Slick move there by the Huskies, number 12, Jack Atchin. This shot is deflected high and wide off the far corner. Penalty's over as Coyne is out of the box. Colonial's hustling back. It's left for Coyne. Coyne finds it back to Taj, but he's unable to get a shot off. He finally slaps one towards the cage, but it's blocked. Lynch with it tries to scoot it towards the net, but it's trapped by the defense and cleared back into the Colonial zone. And a good alley-oop pass. It'll be fielded by the Huskies. It's poked back along the boards. Lynch with it now for Robert Morris. He turns it over and it's dumped right back behind the net of Murat, who will stick it behind the cage to his defenseman. Lynch with it once more for Robert Morris. Surveying his options, gains the red line. The Colonials will dump and change. Loria chasing back for Robert Morris now. Pressuring the defense, they'll get it out. Paling tips it along. And this is going to go the length of the ice for an icing. With 6-11 remaining in the period of play. Not too many stoppages here in this one. Good play so far. Let's hope it continues. Very entertaining hockey out there, Matt. Spalisi. Close games are always the fun ones to watch, Mike. Spalisi tied his man up in the draw there, but it's the Huskies that emerge with the puck. Spalisi hauls his man down to the ice. There's a delayed penalty. And I think it's going to be against Spalisi again. And that is against Spalisi. He'll go to the box. And once again, St. Cloud back on the power play. The Huskies have sustained a lot of offensive pressure. We've talked about it early in long stretches. Colonial certainly not helping themselves by going down a man once more. As you can see there, the free hand of Spalisi coming down and helping him haul the, his man to the ice. Spalisi, the freshman from Lakewood, Ohio. In the box. Matt, what were your initial thoughts on the Colonials' first penalty kill effort? You know, I mean, whenever you're short, especially, your only objective should be to not give up a goal. And since they were able to get that kill, I'm going to have to say it was a good kill. Was it sloppy at times? Absolutely. Uh, did it get the job done? Still, absolutely. So 
initial thoughts was that it could have been cleaner. There could have there were some fumbles that could have gone out of the zone that should have gone deeper. But uh, you know, throughout it, they got the job done. So it doesn't really matter how sloppy they were. Still one one here on the scoreboard. Colonials will look to continue to keep the Huskies off the board with this power play right here. As the teams line up for the faceoff, it'll be Lynch with his opposite number, number 28, Kevin Fitzgerald, the sophomore from Oak Brook, Illinois. It's one back, up top to the point. Schultz has it now. He dumps it down, Newell again. This one is tipped up high off the glass, but the Huskies retain the puck, and it, but it squirts out to the neutral zone. Starting back up with it, Israel steps up at the blue line, and offsides will be called by the linesman. 5.39 to remain, or to go in the period. 1.42 remaining on the power play. It's at the penalty, Adams Felici holding. Was the call. Huskies with the puck in the offensive zone again. Two, two St. Cloud players collide, and the Colonials take advantage as they clear the puck down. Smith will handle it behind his net. He'll leave it for Schultz, who's wheeling up the ice, the captain of this Huskies team. Racing into the corner now, and taking it is Brodzniak. Both teams jostling for the puck down low now. Noel has it. He loses it off to the other corner. St. Cloud tries to work it down low, but it's turned over to the Colonials. And racing back now, here's Mantenuto cutting out wide. Mantenuto swings it back, couldn't find Coin. And here comes Newell racing back the other way. It's going to be three on two for St. Cloud. Rosniak with the puck now. His shot deflected up and off the glass. However, the Colonials will slap this one back all the way down the Smith's net. There's a good opportunity there with a man advantage for St. Cloud. Come the Huskies again. Mounting up in the attack. This one up to Miller. Excuse me, Walker, then to Miller and a fan on the shot. Had another opportunity there. Changing again, another shot deflected off a colonial stick. Another slapper. Great shot away. blocked by Alex Robert. Shot was an absolute stinger off the stick of Sam Hentges. This one cross crease pass, no one home. Here comes Spalacy now out of the box. Back to even strength for both teams. Spalacy will dump it into the corner and chase. He's pinned against the boards and he'll hit the ice. Knocking him against the glass was Jack Ashen, or Ashen, excuse me. Here comes Robert Morris now dumping the puck in once again. It's deflected but taken by Lalonde into the corner. Perkusik pins his man against the boards. Unfortunately for Robert Morris, the Huskies will emerge with the puck. This puck will be just dumped towards Marat's net and down into the far corner. Where it's gathered by the Colonials and sent out of the zone. Right back on Smith's net though, and he will corral the puck and cover it for a whistle with 3.02 remaining in the period. We're talking about the shot blocking on the other end. That was a juicy rebound. Puck trickling right out, wide open net. Colonial's doing a nice job of getting bodies in, as you can see there. Driving to the cage. Ebear on the drop for Colonial. Set face off play looking like with Lynch in a position to shoot the puck. But unfortunately, St. Cloud wins it back. Colonials keep it in. A shot into the glove as Schaefer's wrister from north of the circles is snatched up by Smith. Colonials looking to continue this offensive, their offensive attack. And we've seen this a few times yesterday where they like to take that far side winger and stick it behind the center, the centerman on these draws in the offensive zone. It didn't happen there, but Ebear and Tanj are able to win it back to Israel. 
whose shot is blocked down by Noel. And right away, the Huskies start out on the rush. Four on two coming back. Slick move by Brozniak to get it down low. Shot wide of the cage. Colonials will emerge. It's Schaefer who will backhand it up and out of play after it deflects off the glass. Another face off in this one. Both teams get a change out onto the ice. Mantenuto will take the draw against Jacob Benson. This one is one back to the Huskies. St. Cloud with it in the offensive zone once again. But the Colonials are able to create a turnover at the blue line, but unfortunately they can't get it through the neutral zone. With it now is Coyne who gives it back to Robert. Working up with it now and dumping it on net and into the trapper of Smith. was number 20 for the Colonials. Kip Hoffman. Hoffman, the freshman out of Huntley, Illinois. Just two minutes remaining in this first period of play. A little bit of two minutes of change, rather. Shots nine to four in favor of St. Cloud. As you can see, Perkusic lined up behind Spolese. Perkusic shot high off the shoulder of Smith. Perkusic with it again, sticked away by Smith. Here comes St. Cloud. Now Miller tips it up into the zone and he'll chase. Puck now on the back of Marat's net. The team's trying to hack and get it off the netting and it comes free. Into the corner with it now. Spinning and turning it down low are the Huskies. With it now is Miller. Miller trying to find his man out front. No dice. This one is sent all the way back around. Loria tries to tip it out of the zone. Doesn't work the first time, but he gets it on the second crack. And the Colonials and Huskies have got a change of lines. Miller will lay this one back in as Israel will give chase back behind the net of Murat. Israel will dump this one. It'll be gathered, when it, or fanning on the shot, rather, or the attempt was Schultz. But fortunately for the Huskies, nothing comes of it. Here come the Huskies now. St. Cloud gaining the red line. Now the blue line leaving it. Slap shot. Doesn't make his way through and then trickles through at the end. But wide of the cage. Another great block there. That time it was Nolan Schaefer, the Colonial D-man. Well, Adamo tried to make something out of nothing as he was outnumbered in his offensive end. But he turns it out to the neutral zone of the Colonials, dump it back deep. Paling with it now. Nick Paling, rather. Turned over to Ebert. Ebert will just dump this one high off the glass behind the net of Smith. Tons chases in and bumps shoulders with Schultz. Back to Nick Paling. Here comes the Huskies now. Weak shot off the pads of Murat. No problem for him. Off into the corner now. The team's jostling. In the period of play will end. We have a score of one to one after third or after 20 minutes of play. We'll have our brief first intermission. Dakota Lamb and Avon Patel will be on our intermission report. One one after the first. Our goals are by Newell for the St. Cloud Huskies and by Perkusic for the Colonials. Thank you for listening here. I'm Michael Shuley, Matt Sokovic alongside me. We'll be back shortly. Can't get enough of your favorite colonial sports? Follow RMU Athletics on social media at RMU Athletics on Twitter, RMU Athletics on Instagram, and be sure to like our page on Facebook at Robert Morris University Athletics. Go Colonials! Hey there, Colonial fans. It's time to meet our Student Athletes of the Week, sponsored by People's Gas. This week we celebrate Malik Padaway from men's basketball and Alex Tonge from men's hockey. Senior forward Malik Padaway finished up non-conference play with a double-double in the Colonials' huge blowout against Hood on Saturday with 18 points and 10 rebounds. 
He shot .889 from the field, helping the Colonials achieve their second highest field goal percentage in program history. Senior forward Alex Tonge scored two goals in the Colonials' 3-1 win over AIC on Sunday, with his seventh and eighth goals of the season. Tonja's game winner came just eight seconds into the third period on a breakaway and puts him sixth place on the program's all-time scoring list. Congratulations to our Student Athletes of the Week. For more, visit rmucolonials.com and remember to use the hashtag Colonial Pride. Day one of the seventh annual Free Rivers Classic is in the books. I'm Matt Geica with RMU Media as the Colonials fell 7-4 to four to Brown in game two of day one up here at the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex. It was a night of firsts in a couple of different ways. Number one, it's our program's first game ever in this building, and number two was the first meeting ever for the Colonials against Brown, and RMU came out all guns a-blazing, going up two to nothing after one period before Brown scored four in the second, and then eventually skated away with the victory. Head coach Derek Schooley for the Colonials lamented the lack of consistency, even though he praised the way his team came out for this one. You know, we were, Really, really good in the first period. We were outstanding, put a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm and a, and a lot of heart. Uh, they came out and took it to us, uh, kind of the reverse. And, but they scored more than we did, and uh, then uh, we just we we battled, we competed, we didn't quit. And then uh, you know, at the end of the day, we just dug ourselves too big of a hole in the second period. But, uh, there were good things. We're still a young team. We still have to keep our focus for 60 minutes. And right now, we are uh, we're a 35, 40-minute team. And if we can we can turn it to, around, you saw the, the glimpse of, of what we could do. I mean, we got 11 freshmen, and uh, that was big for Granny Bear to, to get back in the score sheet. He's had uh, been hurt a little bit and been adjusting to the game, but uh, three goals for him is a uh, you know a good. Uh, a good start, but uh, we just need to be consistent more for 60 minutes. Not to bury the lead too much, Grant Ebear, freshman center, scored three goals for his first NCAA hat trick. He had the Colonials only two goals into the third period, and then he scored another one on a drop pass from Alex Tonge to make it 4 3 and keep things very interesting here up in Cranberry. Ebear credited his line mates, including Tonge, for putting him in good spots to shoot the puck. My uh, line mates are excellent tonight. They put the puck in the stick pretty easy and I kind of tapped it in, so it wasn't hard. But uh, yeah, my team, my um, uh, line mates, uh, Perky and uh, Conj, passing the puck there and made it easy for me. Well, Army won't win the Three Rivers Classic this time around, but they have a reputation, certainly, in college hockey for taking home the Confluence Cup. They've done it three times in the six previous tournaments, and Brown coach Brendan Wittett said that was in his Bears' minds as they took the ice tonight. It may not have been great from the start, but they did push back in the second. We were not anywhere close to what we need to be um, in terms of what we want with Brown hockey um, in that first period, but uh, I thought as the game went on, so more and more of that. Um, and we just, uh, with a young team, there's, there's some consistency issues um, that you'll have. Um, we had a good week of practice. I thought the guys were ready, and uh, again, I tribute to Robin Morris. I thought they jumped us pretty good early, and I knew they had energy. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's there their tournament and, and um, in conjunction with the Penguins and um, you know, I know they've, they've won a lot of these championships and they've played a lot of championship games so it was not going to be easy uh, to get by them in that, in that realm. If you're into bright sides beyond the individual accolades of Grant Ebear, the Colonials get a great chance to prove their medal tomorrow night. It'll be a five o'clock face-off against the number one team in the nation, the St. Cloud State Huskies. The Huskies are going to be ticked after losing 7-2 to number 14 Union in the first game here today. But for RMU, it's their first chance to play a number one ranked team in eight years. We hope to see you down there. It's at PPG Paints Arena as the venue shifts in this tournament for Saturday. One last time, from Cranberry, this is Matt Geico. Number 10 on our top 15 moments list is a true team triumph as the Colonials overwhelmed a pair of ranked opponents in the 2015 Three Rivers Classic. Not only did a deep RMU team net 11 goals in the two games, 
15 players scored at least a point, and the goalie tandem of Terry Schaefer and Dalton Isaac each presided over a victory. We just had a special team that year. It was a really deep team, and uh, you know, anytime you can get it four lines out there rolling without much of a drop uh, from one to four, it's, uh, it makes a big difference. After senior Schaefer stopped 52 shots against number 14 Penn State in the opening round, junior Isaac held the fort against number six UMass Lowell in the championship as RMU overcame a 3-1 deficit. With five points in the event, Pittsburgh's Zach Lynch joined Schaefer on the all-tourney team, and RMU went on to win 24 games for the second straight season. When the lights are brightest, RMU tends to shine uh, shine the brightest as well. Uh, I remember the locker room was just always excited for an opportunity to get to play against these kinds of teams, and we really always performed well on the biggest stages. Here at the Army Island Sports Center, I'm Matt Geica with head coach Derek Schooley. Time to talk pucks once again. It's the Men's Hockey Weekly and an important week, coach, with the Three Rivers Classic coming up. But before we get to that, you come off the holiday break with a split at AIC up in, uh, in Massachusetts. You scored three goals in both of those games, too, against the second-place team. feel like that's a pretty positive outcome to start the second half? Well, I thought we were really good to open the, the, our first game. Um, I thought we were really good, and as the game went on, I thought they took it to us a little bit. And then, in the, and in the third period, they were uh, it was back to an even game again, and they got a bounce at the end, and we didn't uh, we didn't uh, get a penalty kill that we needed right down the stretch. And um, good hockey game, um, good first weekend out. We got a, a nice. Uh, uh, I think we kind of stole a game with 17 shots on goal. Francis Murat was outstanding. I thought Luke Lynch and Alex Tonge were, were uh, big-time leaders for us uh, offensively and uh, big-time uh, play by uh, the, three, the two of them and Eric Israel to get us the game-winning goal. So, um, yeah, you're always happy to go on the road and get a, a split, and uh, we got to be ready to go here, and we got to continue to get better. Yeah, this is different this week. Typically, with the Classic, it's right after the holiday. This time, you get two games. Maybe get your feet back under you in game action. Alex Tonge seemed to think on Sunday that was an advantage. How do you feel about it as a coach? Well, it's a, it's a weird time because you got New Year's and New Year's Day and all thrown in the mix, and, and then we're uh, coming back, and uh, you've got some really quality teams coming in. And the Browns playing very well right now. They just beat Army. Uh, you got uh, St. Cloud, number one in the nation, and then you got Union that's been consistent in the top 15 all year. So these are some good hockey teams that are coming into to the Three Rivers Classic. So hopefully uh, uh, we can continue the success we've had in, in this tournament because it's uh, always fun for our, our guys, our student athletes, and we're ready to go, hopefully. Yeah, what's the energy like on a week like this? It's a short week, but like you said, it's one thing that you look forward to every year, no doubt about it, with this tournament. Well, I think the energy is going to pick up as the week goes on. We've got the banquet, and uh, uh, the teams are going to start coming into town, and you're going to see uh, uh, union practice in here at our rink and, uh, uh, tomorrow, and then the, you get the banquet on Thursday. And so I think it's, uh, it's one of those things, I think as the week goes on, the energy is going to pick up, and we know this is always a big deal for our university and, and for us uh, the, in the hockey community in the city of Pittsburgh. So I think the energy is going to get going, and uh, we've had a, we had a really good practice today, and uh, uh, we had a uh, uh, get our legs uh, adjusted uh, after a day off on, on New Year's Day. So it, uh, uh, tomorrow will be also a good day, and I said we'll get uh, the energy cranked up as the weekend goes on. You've won the Confluence Cup three out of six times. This tournament has been competed. You've joked after a couple of the wins that it might be tough to get some quality teams in here because they're afraid of getting upset, but you did it again. Uh, you do have, like you mentioned, with Union and St. Cloud State, two ranked opponents, and, and Brown coming off a nice win. How much of a point of pride is that for you as a program to, to keep bringing these strong fields into Pittsburgh? Well, you want to keep having these uh, good exposing uh, college hockey to people and uh, the fans and get top ranked teams coming in and you never know where they're going to be ranked when you get them but you always want to try to to uh, get teams that have great uh, histories and have done very well St. Cloud was number one in the nation last year in the going into the NCAA tournament so you knew that they were going to have a, a strong team Union's always been strong they won the national championship uh, Brown's got the history and the pedigree of an Ivy League school so you knew when we scheduled these that there'd be a chance for them to have be good hockey teams, and, and here we are uh, getting a top 15 team and a number one team in the nation. RMU will open up against Brown in the Classic up at the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex in Cranberry. That'll be the nightcap on Friday, as it'll be St. Cloud State and Union at 5 o'clock. Colonials and Brown for the first time ever in the two teams' respective histories at 8, and then we'll see how things shake out for the consolation in the championship games at PPG Paints Arena on Saturday. For Coach Schooley, I'm Matt Geica. We'll talk to you next time.
here at the Army Island Sports Center, ready for the Three Rivers Classic. I'm Matt Geica, talking to senior captain Brandon Watt. And Brandon, a short week coming off the trip to AIC where you guys split. Do you feel like that's maybe a good thing because you can keep that momentum going? Yeah, I mean, it was nice to, uh, to get a couple games in early as soon as we came back from break. Um, nice to get our legs under us, especially after we had a little bit of a longer break over Christmas this year. Um, so, you know, usually like we play the Three Rivers as soon as we get back. So I think uh, the trip to AEC definitely helped us get back and into the swing of things before we start the tourney. Yeah, I was talking to Alex Tonge after the, the Sunday game up there in Massachusetts. He said he thought it might be an advantage to get those two games and feel like you're back in the swing of things. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, in the past years we came back and those were the first games we've played, um, especially playing teams from out of conference. You know, it's always kind of a, a different game. So it was nice to get... Uh, down to Springfield for uh, a road trip and get a couple of games under us. Well, so far this season, including out there at Springfield, it's been a very successful defensive season for your team. It's a departure from what the Colonials are, are used to being about. Why do you think uh, the D has been such a, a lockdown factor this year? Uh, I think it all starts with our goalie, Frankie. Um, you know, sometimes I think this year we've, uh, we haven't exactly found a way to score goals like we have in the past. Um, so in order to win hockey games when you're not putting up, you know, four or five goals a game is playing sound defensively. Um, and I think down the stretch it's certainly going to help us, as, uh, you know, as long as we continue to find ways to score goals. I think our power play is starting to click a little bit more now. So the fact that we uh, can bear down defensively will definitely help us down the stretch. That's been a, a different type of a season for you, obviously, as team captain. That's an increased responsibility. But also you had some injuries to battle through, too. So... How do you feel where you're at emotionally here? How have you kept your confidence up as, as now you're working your way back into things? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, kind of been the same way for the past two years for me, uh, battling some injuries. But, you know, I think uh, it's been good that the coaches have supported me the whole time. And, you know, the teammates have helped me, uh, helped me keep my confidence up. Um, you know, kind of sad to say, but I guess I'm kind of used to it by now. You know, just working my way back in and uh, trying to find my legs and whatnot, especially coming off an injury. Now, last thing for you, the Three Rivers Classic, you've been on the winning side, and you've also seen another team hoist the Confluence Cup. How important is this weekend? Because it's right in the middle of the season, it's not Atlantic hockey play, but you get a chance to put your skills and your team's ability on display for the, for the entire nation, really. I think it's cool. Um, it's definitely a good experience for us. We get to play teams that you know, we don't normally see. Uh, especially teams coming from out of conference. Um, and I think it's also a huge turning point in the season, too. The first two years we were, uh, we were able to win, which was nice, and it kind of brought our team closer. And even last year we kind of learned uh, a little bit about our team. And I think the past three years this tournament really kind of defined who we were in terms of you know, bringing us all together for, uh, for the stretch drive. Let's come see the Colonials. Lemieux Sports Complex in Cranberry, 8 o'clock. They have the nightcap on Friday against Brown University, then St. Cloud State or Union the second day at PPG Paints Arena. Number nine on our list throws it back to Halloween weekend 2015 when the Colonials invaded Yost Arena, the storied home of the number 10 ranked Michigan Wolverines. After losing a third period lead in the series opener, the senior laden Colonials were determined to get a W in the rematch. Yeah, we just, I mean, we knew we belonged and we knew we had a good group. We were confident that we could play with anyone. And I just think that, that our effort on Saturday night really showed that. I, I mean, there wasn't really even a minute that they were even in the game. RMU did indeed prove its point, scoring three goals in the first period and getting 34 saves from goalie Dalton Isaac in blanking Mighty Michigan. Greg Gibson had three assists to wrap up National Player of the Month honors too, but the confident Colonials took it as just another stride toward their second straight 24-win season. We came every night expecting to win, and we had the, the belief in our room that we were one of the best teams in the country, and I, ju I just think that uh, when we played our game like we did that night, it really showed that we could be. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. Say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a center. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. Now in its 15th season, RMU men's hockey celebrates the 15 greatest moments in program history. The 2016-17 Colonials entered the annual Three Rivers Classic looking for a boost. RMU got that lift, first blanking Ferris State, 
before coming from behind to whack number 13 Quinnipiac in the championship game. As part of a five-goal rally, senior captain Rob Mann buried the go-ahead goal, then assisted on one of two Timmy Moore tallies in the third. And the Colonials had won their third Confluence Cup, all earned against ranked foes. For us, just to play against um, some bigger name schools, you know, it's a good chance to, to showcase yourself. And, um, you know, it's a good chance for the younger guys to see, too, that we're no slouch and can compete with anyone. For all the offense, tourney MVP honors went to freshman goalie Francis Murat who allowed just one goal on 76 shots and a sign of great things to come. From day one, that guy was, you know, calm and collected and played confident. And, um, so, you know, you're not really surprised when you see it, but obviously it's still impressive. Can't get enough of your favorite colonial sports? Follow RMU Athletics on social media at RMU Athletics on Twitter, RMU Athletics on Instagram, and be sure to like our page on Facebook at Robert Morris University Athletics. Go Colonials! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to PPG Paints Arena for this consolation game of the 2019 Three Rivers Classic. I'm Michael Shuley alongside me, Matt Simkovic. Matt, we're 1-1 after one. St. Cloud had the goal taken off the board early on in the first period due, in the, due to the net being off its moorings. We had a goal by Noel for the Huskies and by Percusic for the Colonials. Uh, Robert Morris taking two power or two penalties on the or in the period rather is that something they need to watch out for heading into the second oh absolutely mike that would be one of the only things from the colonials first period that i would say to change would be uh you know they there's nothing really you can do to control the penalties against you obviously you try to um but so yeah that would be the only thing that i would say would uh that they have to clean up still would be the penalties as of right now. And once that goes away and once they can keep them to five on five, I like the matchup of the Colonials and the Huskies. He bear to take the draw for Robert Morris to start off the period. And we are underway here in the second. Paling to Paling, brother to brother connection there. Back in a shot, short side on Murat, but it's turned away. Back up top to Schultz. Shoulder of weak wrister, sticked away by Marat behind the net. Pinning to the board was Jack Paling, but he gets it back up top. Schult with it now. He'll change back with number 10, John Lizot. Back down low. Great pressure here early on in the period from the Huskies. But even better pressure up top in the zone by Luke Lynch. And he gets the puck out of the zone, and it'll be a face-off after a whistle. So as you can see, Matt, early on here in this second period, we're only 45 seconds in, but the Huskies getting set up early. Yeah, you know, offensively, the Huskies certainly came out firing in this second, and we just said that the Colonials are going to have to watch a penalty, and as we say that right on cue, Nolan Schaefer, the Colonial D-man, heads to the box. Another Huskies power play coming up. It's going to be something that Robert Morris has to fend off again. This is back up top to Schultz. Back to Schultz, like like give and go over to Newell. Something that the Colonials do that the Huskies just ran is that switch on the far side you saw here. Noel, number 14 for the Huskies, was left wide open at the top of the circles. Really can be deadly if a pass gets through to him. And it's Noel now cutting back in the zone, trying to get it up to Schultz. Cut off there by Mantenuto, but we get it down deep. Quick change with Brodzinski. Apologies for mispronunciations during the first period of play. Sent into the slot, but sticked away by the Colonials into the corner. And it's taken now by Robert Morris. It's Jeff Lawson. Lawson with it for RMU. He'll send it off the pad of Schultz and into the corner where it is gathered by the Huskies. Noel now will cut across and send it off the skate of Brodzinski. Offsides will be the call. 18-16 remaining in the period and in a minute and one second remaining on the penalty to Schaefer. Face off outside of the Colonials defensive end in the neutral zone near side of the ice. In the dot, it will be Luke Lynch squaring off again against Henkes. We'll have a whistle and some 
pushing on the back side there. This one, puck dropped. Colonials will be the first to gather position. It's Israel who dumps it down, but to the opposition blue line. Entering the zone now are the Huskies. Set back around, Lynch tries to tip it out, but it's held in by Ashan. It'll be cleared back down and handled by Smith. With it now is Ashan. Gaining the blue line with speed, cutting back up, looking for a man up at the point. Dips down low towards the corner. Pass behind the goal, little errant pass there, sent it up to the corner. Taunch trying to back it out, he can't. Shot in the slot, blocked away by Robert Morris. Good job getting in the shooting lane there. Back up top to Ashan at the point. That's Sent across. Real Rister deflected and held and kept out of the zone by the Colonials. Good job there taking sticks away in front of the net of Murat as the puck was in a dangerous position. Now that's for sure going to be one of the defensive keys for the Colonials is blocking shots and limiting the amount of pucks that actually get through to Frankie Murat. As we see one device. that gets through there, Matt, off the blocker of Murat. The junior netminder for the Colonials. Schaefer out of the box, back to five on five hockey. He'll give it to Israel, who gained the red line and dump it down low behind Smith as the Colonials get fresh legs back out on the ice. Hoffman pressuring now for Robert Morris. It's sent across and taken by Jack Paling. And he'll come in off sides. And another whistle in this one. A little bit of a choppy start to the second period of play here, Matt. As we've had several stoppages so far in this one. Absolutely, you know. And with that, the teams don't really get a chance to uh, flow like they normally would when you have constant stops of play, uh, obviously. So really, really limiting the chemistry that the teams can get here. Fitzgerald to take the draw against Belize. He's kicked out. Stepping in now will be number three, Jack Paling. Spalisi does a nice job tying up his stick. Bodies crashing against the ice. No one really to gain possession. It's in the Colonial zone up by the blue line. It's finally sent down low by Marat, where it's taken by Robert. Coin flips it back out into the middle. Three on Spalisi two has it now. Three, three on two for the Colonials. Perkusic a shot over the cage of Smith. Down low, Robert. So it over to Perkusic. Back to Coin. Sends a trickling shot across the crease. Spalacy turns and sends one of those blockered behind the net by Smith. Coin crashing and does a nice job, but it's going to be the Huskies that emerge with the puck. It's cleared, but not past the Colonials' blue line. Paling with it now. He'll send a high backhander in to the cage of Marat, who will catch it in his trapper and freeze. Another face-off with 15-51 remaining in the second period. Shots 15-6 in favor of the Huskies. After the first period of play, the shots were 11-6. So Colonials yet to be credited on the Jumbotron here. Another puck drop, Mantenuto in there for the Colonials, but it's taken by the Huskies. With it now is Schultz in the defensive end, carrying the puck up to the red line, then slapping one. It'll come all the way around to Adamo on the far side by the benches. Gathered once again by the Huskies, but Mantenuto is still play to come away with the puck in the neutral zone. He does one there to bat it down towards the corner, but we're gonna have another stoppage of play here. As the stopping and starting of this period continues. Another offside call. Teams ready to take another face off here. Grant Ebert will take the draw against number 19, Sam Hedkins. Ebert wins it back. Tonj will get it and then send a spinning dump back in behind the net of Smith. With the puck now is Ashan for the Huskies. He sends one up, but not past the blue line of the Colonials. Doing a good job there. Holding the puck out of the zone was McElian. It's finally down deep now. Colonials doing a good job of knocking, knocking the puck away from bodies down low. Up top with it now is Hentges. Hentges flying through the zone. 
head up the whole time, sending one to the far corner. Good job by Ebert using his frame to box a Husky player out, and it'll come all the way around to the near wall. Finally coming to Lynch. Lynch able to take this one and send it up to Ebert. Ebert driving into the zone, cutting out wide, looking for Lynch back down the middle, no dice, it's off a skate. And here comes Noel the other way. Noel's gonna swing out wide, cut back in, takes a huge hit from Schaefer, but gets a shot off on Marat. Marat makes the save. This one will be cleared all the way back down, and the icing will be the call with 14-14 remaining in the period. Nice little play by Noel. We've seen him multiple times in this game. Has the goal for the Huskies so far, using his speed to get into those risky areas. Yeah, Noel does not seem to be afraid of uh, anywhere on the ice. Seems to be taking the body on the boards, cutting through the middle, and making some nice moves. Colonials lose the draw there. It's going to come back out. Walker with it now, finds a man. Skating in, tries to go up high. Marat says no. Back up top to the point. Rister doesn't find his way through to the goaltender. Taj will clear this one deep and change. Kyle Horseman going to go back now for the Colonials. Change back up to the top. Nice job there by the captain, Brandon Watt, to keep that one in. But his shot doesn't find its way through. Puck still with him, though. Down low and his pass to Israel. Off target. It'll come all the way back out to the neutral zone where it's handled by Schaefer. We'll send it back up. Colonials trying to tip it in deep. No dice, though, as Hoffman couldn't get to it. Puck still jostling in the neutral zone. Spilacy knocks a man off it. Schaefer will gather it now. Fire it in behind Smith's cage. It'll be taken by Fitzgerald of the Huskies. Colonials do a nice job swarming the Huskies' defense there, getting the puck down low. But unfortunately, they don't have possession. Big hit there on the sidewall is... A Husky goes to the ice. The Colonials unable to convert on the opportunity. High pass, finds nobody sticking. It's going to go all the way down for an icing call with just under 13 minutes remaining in the second period of play. So, Matt, we're at about the halfway point of this contest so far. What are your, what are your thoughts so far? The Colonials need to get more offensive zone time if they're going to want to beat the Huskies and subsequently the Huskies need to really clean up their offensive zone. Number two in the country, but they certainly are not looking like it with this performance so far. Huskies gain possession off the draw, sends it up. But it's cut off by Perkusic. Up the top now, Robert sends a wrister deflected wide of the cage. Dangerous opportunity there. Loria sends a spinning one towards the cage, no good. Coin gets a crack, no dice as well. Great defensive play there by Paling to cut that shooting lane off. Robert tried to do a little give and go with Coin, but no dice for the Colonials. They're going to get this one back deep then. A good spark of offense from this line of Coin, Loria, and Perkusic. Perkusic now looking for Loria, doesn't come out the way the Colonials would have liked. And this one is kicked off the boards and it's going to come right back to the crease of Murat, who sticks it over to McElligan. With now dumping it down behind the net of Smith. Short with it now. He's pressured by Adamo. And they'll get the puck out. Cross ice on the backhand over to Hentges. Hentges pressured up at the blue line. And he'll turn it over to Lalonde back near his own goal line. Turnover in the defensive zone for the Colonials. No with it. No dice as Marat goes into the splits to take away the bottom of the cage. Shot goes wide. Dangerous play there by the Colonials. You can't turn the puck over in that end, and it almost cost them. Not a whole lot of room to shoot at. Marat did a great job taking away the bottom of the cage. He put it wide. You know, that play right there, that was a phenomenal defensive play by Aiden Gerduckis, number 2-2 two, two for the Colonials. Coming in 22, you can see there on that replay, Mike, he came in and uh, even though the pass was open into the hash marks and Noel did receive the pass pretty cleanly, he got into the lane really quick and didn't let him get that shot off as well as he would like. Another stop to play here. We have a media timeout. Colonials being outshot 17 to eight now. 
And still it seems though, Matt, a lot of the offensive pressure is in this St. Cloud end. Does this come as a surprise to you? Oh, not at all, Mike. You know, we said it earlier, number two in the country, just because they might be having an off weekend here in Pittsburgh doesn't mean they got there by mistake. They are an incredibly talented and hardworking team. Um, the only thing is that uh, it's, it's not paying off for them tonight. The ice is definitely tilted in their offensive zone. The shots aren't lying, the stats aren't lying, uh, but that scoreboard is the only numbers that matter at the end of the game. So that's what I'm interested to see here. Colonial showing a lot of grit to keep this one tied up at one. They win the draw here now. Israel up to Eber, over to Lynch. Lynch a shot pass, looking for Israel, crashing on the backside, no dice. Taj with a slapper from the point into the chest of Smith, and he'll freeze with 11-15 remaining. What did you like out of that little uh, piece of play for the Colonials, Matt? I see a nice smirk on your face. You know, Eric Israel can't say it enough. 200-foot player. You can see he's really using all 200 as he ends up in the boards on the ice behind the Huskies net there. But he's a defenseman that's not afraid to see the play developing in the offensive zone and to shoot it, get his stick down for an easy goal. He did it yesterday, and he's trying it again tonight. you got to love to see the effort out of him. Certainly Israel, one of the top point scorers on this team, over double digits so far this year. Despite the fact that he missed a few games early on, icing negated, good hustle by Tonj. Ebert tries to get up to Schaefer at the point, he does, and it's wristed back down. Israel pinching, does a good job to keep that one in well, the Zinsky zone. He tried to hit Schaefer on that shot attempt, and he definitely took the worst of it. Walker with it now, tries to find his man. Newell will kick this one back out in the middle of the ice. It'll be gathered as Schaefer couldn't get to it. Brodzinski with it now. Brodzinski give and go. Doesn't come through, though, as the Colonials tight defense. The pass wasn't there. Maybe one too many passes for St. Cloud there. Henkes was the intended target as a wrister goes way wide of the cage and back around to the corner to the point. Back to Henkes in the corner. Surveying his options, but he loses the puck. This one pops up in the air. It'll fall down. Eber trying to battle for it. He gets it, flips it to his backhand, and does a nice job protecting the puck on his way out of the zone. Eber with it now, looking for Tonj or Lynch in the middle, but it's deflected up high off a stick. Turned over, though, by the Huskies behind their net. Eber still battling for it. This line for the Colonials seemingly out there for a while, and they're going to head to the bench as the Colonials get some fresh legs out there. It's Michael Loria who has the puck in the neutral zone and is knocked down, but does a good job from his backside to maintain the puck and get it to a teammate. It's dumped back in, and Loria... Now on the other side of the ice, all over the place this shift so far, keeping the puck in the zone. But unfortunately for Robert Morris, the Huskies are able to get it out. And here comes St. Cloud, good defense there by Robert, shielding the puck off his man. The Colonial is able to regain possession. It's the Colonial's been playing now. extremely aggressive defense on St. Cloud whenever they get into the zone. And it seems to be working phenomenally, either with a shot block or like there, a missed opportunity, a puck trickles into the corner. Uh, but the, the Colonial's D-men are doing a great job at picking their heads up, seeing where the back checker coming back is, and being able to step up and take the body and uh, take time and space away from these Huskies players, which is something that you, you can't give them especially at this level. If you give one of these guys time and space, it's gonna end up in the back of the net. So they're doing a great job of minimizing that here tonight. Thank you, Matt. And they have done a good job at that. As you saw on the replay there, that give and go effort between Brodzinski and Hetkes, where it was denied by the skate of Israel as a shot turned wide of Marat's cage. Ashan with it now on the wall. It's taken away for him by Loria and dumped it back up high into the neutral zone. This one's going to trickle behind the goal line and the icing is going to be called. Some groans down on the ice from the Colonials we can hear up here. But the Huskies get the call. Back to back icings for the Colonials here. And Spalacy to take the draw, his wingers or to his side, rather, is Loria. On the other side is Lawson. It's taken now by Noel behind the net. Noel with it again, trying to cut back in the middle of near where he scored his first goal of the evening. Noel spinning around, doing a great job of keeping the puck away from the Colonials. 
and the puck finds his stick once again. Shot pass wide open in the middle. Unfortunately, it was a bit too hard for the for the Huskies to handle first time, and it'll end up coming out of the zone. That was a very dangerous opportunity, and they're coming right back. Right in the middle, Hempkes trying to find Noel, no good. Hempkes regains it and sends a backhand shot past the cage of Marat. With it now is Brodz Brodzinski. It's taken off of him. Good defense by the Colonials. Watt has it now, and he'll dump it down deep. He'll bounce off the boards and come to Smith. He'll be turned back into the far side, though. On the rush again is Brodzinski. He turns into the middle, fakes a pass and a shot off the off the glove of Morant behind the net. A rebound jump back out, but Colonial was able to get it down low. Still struggling to get the puck out of the zone. It's gloved down by Brodzinski. Over to Schultz. Schultz tees up a slap shot. Finds its way through, but wide of the cage. St. Cloud still with pressure, and this time finally getting some shots and some dangerous chances in on Marat. Still with the puck down low in front of the net. Good defense by Robert to stick it away behind the cage. Marat trying to get his glove on it, and he does. And we finally get a whistle with 7.15 remaining in the period. What'd you like out of that little defensive effort there by Robert Morris, Matt? What did I like out of that defensive effort by Robert Morris? The fact that they didn't let up a goal. That's just about uh, the only thing that matters right now if you're this Colonial squad and the defensive zone gets hectic. As long as you're not getting scored on, it's not a bad shift. You know, there was a quote that I read the other day that said, if you view winning and losing as a life and death battle, you're gonna end up dying a lot of deaths. And that's just something that I thought of, you know. Uh, you really can't get too flustered with how they're playing right now because it's not hurting them as of right now, Mike. Thank you, Matt. Very insightful. Didn't really take you as the type to drop a deep quote on us here on a Saturday afternoon, but certainly what we got there. Have to appreciate the fact that the Colonials have been collapsing around Marat when they needed to, taking the sticks and pucks away and preventing any real chances in below the net there, or in around the cage, rather. But unfortunately for the Colonials, from what I've seen, Matt, is by collapsing on the net, they're leaving the slot open at times, and it has bit them once earlier tonight. Yeah, you know, leaving the middle of the ice open is something that they definitely can't do anymore, so seeing all the players come back and crash the own net whenever there's a shot and Marat doesn't make the freezing save, is something that is going to work out in the Colonials' favor tonight. Huskies regain the puck again and dump it down low. Israel will stick it around for Schaefer. Tried to get it to Mantenuto, who just bats it back out into the neutral zone, but it'll be cleared back in and handled by Marat. Just under seven minutes here in the third period remaining. This one is cleared back down for the Colonials for another icing. And Matt, this is several icing calls the Colonials have taken in this period. This could pose some danger for Robert Morris eventually. A lot of offensive zone face-offs, it seems like, for the Huskies in this one. Certainly something Robert Morris might want to improve on as we continue here as a shot is sticked away by Marat. Came through a lot of traffic. He was able to make the save. The Colonials finally starting to mount up an attack. But that is short-lived and it is turned back over to the Huskies. Cutting through the zone now is Oshin. Oshin gets through and sends a shot, but it'll be saved into the padding of Murat and held for a whistle. Good speed and a nice shot from Oshin there on the rush. Able to cut outside towards the top of the circle, create a lane for himself. Robert Morris now preparing for the draw. It's going to be Lynch versus Hentges. Puck dropped and battling for it. Colonials emerge victorious with the puck. Robert finds Ebert. Ebert doing a nice job to shield the puck. Sends a shot deflected, it looks like, in front. But Smith makes multiple saves and then gets the whistle. Good play off the rush there from the Colonials, Matt. Oh yeah, looked oddly similar to the Huskies' first goal tonight with number 14 coming down and cutting into the middle of the slot and taking a shot. That play works, we've seen it here firsthand tonight and Eberry decided to give it a try there. Unfortunately, he didn't have as much success with it as Null did. I think one of the differences in that one though was 
Taj in front of the net. I, if I can recall correctly, there was not really a big screen presence in front of Murat on Newell's goal. I might have, Taj might have even gotten a stick to that shot. So that adds an even more deeper wrinkle into the options that the Colonials have there on the breakout. They change the puck out again. It's Ebert once more. Pass a little errant looking for Jeff Lawson. But it'll bank off the board to be corralled by St. Cloud, who cuts back into the zone. It's Hentges leaving it for a teammate. It's Noel, a shot turned away by Marat. Shots 9-20 to 20 now in favor of the Huskies. Hentges shielding off his number counterpart in Robert. This one is dumped back in by Schultz, though, towards the goal line, but Ebert tries to get it out, fails. Held in by the blue line by Brodzinski, but it's given back up to Ebert. Ebert finds Tonge, late shift for the Colonials, back to Ebert in the middle, cuts to his backhand, protecting the puck. Still with it, circles all the way around the net, banks up to the point to Israel. Israel, Arister deflected wide of the cage. Smith had no clue where that one was coming in. Back to Taj in the slot, tries to fight through, finds Lynch and a shot into the chest protector of Smith and held on for a save. Good job by the Colonials in the offensive zone. Yeah, great, great bit of pressure there. Ebert especially whenever he looped back down and picked up his shot rebound by the 84 lumber sign in the right corner of Smith. Uh, great determination there, really picked his head up and made that little chip pass to Tonge that almost worked out for Luke Lynch as he got the backdoor pass. Some offensive pressure, probably some of the best chances the Colonials have seen possibly all night since they've scored that goal early on. Taking another media timeout here. What, what do you think the Colonials need to do, Matt, to generate more of those offensive opportunities? It seems like they've played so much in their defensive end this period and the latter stages of the first that by the time almost they get ready to come on the uh, forecheck, they might be out of gas. Yeah, you know, that's a big thing is uh, the players' endurance. And the, the first period we saw, I talked about the streaking offense, how the wings really like to shoot down the the sides of the ice and try and get fast, quick attacks in on these Husky players here. But as time's gone on, that speed is kind of kind of worn away there. As you can see, Perkusik lining up here behind Spalacy for the shot off the draw. Seen this multiple times from the Colonials tonight. They did it a lot last night. They used this play, or this look rather, a lot of the time here. It's taken now by Paling, sends it across. Shot low, deflected behind the cage of Marat. Colonials walk out there. Here comes Israel now leading the offensive charge. Shot sticked away by Smith. Israel with it in the corner. Colonials get it out in the slot. Schaefer now has it at a point. Whips it across to Israel. Israel slap shot doesn't make its way through. It's blocked down in front and we have a whistle. And we have a hooking call and the Colonials are gonna go back on the power play it seems. And heading to the box is a Huskies player. That's going to be number seven, Nick Paling for the Huskies. Both Paling twins drawing a penalty in this one so far. The only two that the Huskies have had all night. And what a proper time for this to come for the Colonials when they're finally starting to mount an offensive attack. Let's see if they can convert. It'll be Lynch in the draw for the Colonials. However, Robert Morris loses possession. Will be gathered by the Huskies and cleared down. Israel tried to stop into the neutral zone, but can't. Hentges does a nice job of getting to it, but he's thrown to the ice by Israel, but his helmet pops off and we're gonna have a stoppage of play. It's Israel and Hentges down on the ice, exchanging some words. Hentges, of course, not happy about having his helmet knocked off by the Colonials defenseman. And he'll head to the bench. In on the draw now will be Lynch and I believe Fitzgerald for the Huskies. And the Colonials gather the puck. It's Adamo back to Tanj, who leads it for Israel. Is gonna start the breakout by circling around the net of Marat. Israel will leave it back for Tanj. 
with speed entering the zone. Sends it across to Loria. Loria shot off the post and out of play. High. And what a chance for the Colonials. Beautiful pass by Tonj. Managed to thread the needle perfectly. Just about five to 10 feet into the zone. Loria tape to tape receiving it. Quick shot off. Smith just getting the knob of his stick on that one. Great, great opportunity and great look by the Colonials. I thought I heard post, but you said it was off the knob. I'll take your word for it, Matt. Good job by Israel to hold this one in off the draw. Shot deflected way wide by Lynch and gathered by the Huskies. This one will be dumped out, but not as far as Tonj near his own blue line. Israel have it now. Israel has it now. We'll take it behind the net of Murat. Slow things down and break out. He'll reverse it back to Loria over to Tonj. Tonj with speed in again. Cuts into the middle. Circles back around. Leaves it for Israel who plays it off a skate. Israel looking down low, but it's deflected off a skate of a St. Cloud player. Battling for it now. Back into the middle. Adamo chops at it, and they keep it in the zone. Israel down low, and a shot way up over the, or over the net. But a good opportunity there for the Colonials. Robert Moore still keeping the puck in the zone, but the Huskies finally getting out. Israel in way deep on that one. 24 seconds remaining on the power play. Israel will take it back into his own zone now. Colonials work it back up the ice. It's Mantenuto up to Ebert. Ebert sends it hard in around. Perkusic tries to cut it off, tip in into the corner. Ebert's there. Lalonde with it now. Three Colonials in the corners. Marat bangs his stick off the ice. And we're back to even strength as the Colonials get a chance, but it's going to squirt back out to Palin, who makes a diving play to keep it on sides. And he tries to stop at five. Hold Marat, says no. Rebound, and they score. Back in, with the Huskies the lead. What an individual effort by Paling. Out of the box, diving to make the save, which should have been a clear by the Huskies, results in being a pass. One, two shots, the rebound kicks out and Fitzgerald barely squeezes it. Low glove along the ice past Francis Murat. That's a real tough one to give up there for the Colonials as they had two cracks at it. Murat made a great, two great saves. Unfortunately, Alex Robert was unable to get the puck out of the danger zone. And just like that, the Huskies went from being down a man to up a goal. Just over two minutes remaining in the second period as well. Shots 22 to 12 for St. Cloud. Going to take the draw now for Robert Morris. The puck is dropped and it's jostled around in the neutral zone but dumped in and Marat will play it behind his cage. Colonials work it back up to the neutral zone. Ashawn gives it back to his D partner and it'll be sent back up the ice. There's Walker trying to cut through, but it's poked away from him. Up to the point to Ashawn, but it'll be cleared off a stick and out of play. What do they have to do to get back to the way that they were playing before the, net, the puck went in the net? You know, the first thing that I would say here is at this point in the game, late in the second, you just can't get too far down. There is still an entire period of hockey left to play for these Colonials, so you just don't want to see them lose all of their momentum, and uh, that would be the only thing that I could think of, uh, just momentum for right now. Get, get through to the intermission and then regroup. Colonials clear the puck out of their own zone here. Loria racing up and grabbing it. Finds Lynch. Lynch back to Loria, who shoots one over wide of the cage. Israel down to the ice now. The Huskies with the puck, and they're going to start out. Tonja and Schaefer back cutting into the middle. Over a pass juggled, though, and it's sent back across, and it was off escape. Marat didn't know where it was. This one's turned back over into the middle, a wrist shot. Kept out by Marat, getting down low, and a shot blocked there by the Colonials. 59 seconds remaining in the period. The Huskies. Getting some chances here. Tonj has it on the half wall, protecting the puck. Finding somewhere to go, and he's just going to circle back as the Huskies drop off and change. Tonj will leave it for Lynch. 
Lynch will send a wrister back in behind the cage of Smith, and he'll go off the ice. This one sent up and tipped, and off a stick and out of play, this one will go with 36.4 seconds remaining. Colonial's getting outshot 14 to 24, a 10 shot deficit. Face off for the Colonials, and the Huskies will come out into the neutral zone. Spalacy versus Fitzgerald. Each player is involved in pivotal moments of this game. Fitzgerald with a game tying, or with the game leading goal as it stands now. And Spalacy was involved with the game tying goal scored by the Colonials in the first. It was initially credited to him before it was changed to Nick Perkusik. The duo will take the draw again. Opposite side of the ice after Another stoppage. This one will be chopped back into the Husky zone, taken by Schultz. He'll circle around the cage of Smith and break out. He sends one up looking for, for Paling, but it doesn't find him. And he'll chop it out from behind Marat's net. Jack Paling with it now. It'll be dumped back around for Perkusik. Perkusik does a good job of shielding a man off of the puck, and he'll dump this one out as the time expires in this period. After two, our score is two to one. St. Cloud in the lead over Robert Morris. Shots 24 to, tw to 14. After this one, Michael Schulley, Matt Simkovic here. We're gonna step aside on this one.
Hey there, Colonial fans. It's time to meet our Student Athletes of the Week, sponsored by People's Gas. This week, we celebrate Malik Padaway from men's basketball and Alex Tonge from men's hockey. Senior forward Malik Padaway finished up non-conference play with a double-double in the Colonial's huge blowout against Hood on Saturday with 18 points and 10 rebounds. He shot .889 from the field, helping the Colonials achieve their second highest field goal percentage in program history. Senior forward Alex Tonge scored two goals in the Colonials' 3-1 win over AIC on Sunday with his seventh and eighth goals of the season. Tonja's game winner came just eight seconds into the third period on a breakaway and puts him sixth place on the program's all-time scoring list. Congratulations to our Student Athletes of the Week. For more, visit rmucolonials.com and remember to use the hashtag Colonial Pride. Number 10 on our top 15 moments list is a true team triumph as the Colonials overwhelmed a pair of ranked opponents in the 2015 Three Rivers Classic. Not only did a deep RMU team net 11 goals in the two games, 15 players scored at least a point, and the goalie tandem of Terry Schaefer and Dalton Isaac each presided over a victory. We just had a special team that year. It was a really deep team, and uh, you know, anytime you can get it four lines out there rolling without much of a drop uh, from one to four, it's, uh, it makes a big difference. After senior Schaefer stopped 52 shots against number 14 Penn State in the opening round, junior Isaac held the fort against number six UMass Law in the championship as RMU overcame a 3-1 deficit. With five points in the event, Pittsburgh Zach Lynch joined Schaefer on the all-tourney team, and RMU went on to win 24 games for the second straight season. When the lights are brightest, RMU tends to shine uh, shine the brightest as well. Uh, I remember the locker room was just always excited for an opportunity to get to play against these kinds of teams, and we really always performed well on the biggest stages. Coming to PPG Paints Arena for the consolation game of the Three Rivers Classic. And we're underway here quickly, and here comes Granny Bear for the Colonials, wasting no time at the start of this third period. Getting a backhand shot on net there, but it's kicked away by Smith. I'm Michael Shuley alongside me, Matt Simkovic. Tight second period of play. Great play though at the end, coming out of the box by Nick Paling, a diving effort to corral the puck. They get the puck back, end up scoring. Kevin Fitzgerald putting St. Cloud in the lead. But the Colonials, towards the tail end of that period, mounting some pressure. We have a penalty out on the ice. The Colonials will be on the power play as Schultz is sent to the box for the Huskies. Noel gains the face off and dumps it back down. Call hooking on Schultz. So the Colonials right off the start of this period have a chance to tie this game up. Taj enters the zone looking for Adamo. Still keeping it on the wall, getting it up to Israel, who finds Lynch. Back over to Taj. Taj looking, sends it back to Israel. One time slap shot, finds its way through, but clanks off the backboard. Israel taken down at the blue line. Big scrum for the puck there, and it finally kicks out, but to the Huskies. This one is cleared down. It'll be handled by Marat. 1-10 remaining on the penalty to Schultz. Israel with it now. Driving up. Getting past the slick move by Israel. Getting all the way down past the goal line, but he'll lose the puck. It'll be cleared out by Jack Paling. Marat will field this one being pressured by Nick Paling. It is turned over to Nick Paling. He'll dance around and in the offensive zone will eventually be tipped back off a stick and he'll work it back to the defensive end and clear it back down to Marat. 34 seconds remaining on the penalty to Schultz. Coming back again are the Colonials. Perkusik has it down deep. He'll dump it back around, but unfortunately the Colonials will lose it. And with 18 seconds left, the Colonials will try to get one final rush in on the power play. Cusick be able to bring it in short two on one for the Colonial shot. Man, to Lalonde, he scores. Oh, 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 oh. For Cusick to Lalonde, and the Colonials make this one tied again. What a wonderful play 
by Perkusik to come up by the blue line. There was a short scrum. He came out of it with the puck, sent it right over to Lalonde, and a beautiful shot by Nick Lalonde to beat Smith High Glove. And they're just like that. We have a tie game with 17.42 remaining. It's gonna be interesting to see how this one pans out. But it will surely be exciting, this consolation game for the 2019 Three Rivers Classic. St. Cloud State entering the weekend number one ranked in the entire country. But Robert Morris has been putting up a fight in this one, being outshot by 10 shots so far, 26 to 10 in favor of the Huskies. But the scoreboard is what counts. It is currently two to two, but the refs are skating over into the penalty box, and they're gonna look at this one, apparently. I believe what's under review is the fact that Nick Perkusik might have gone offside. I think the Huskies bench yelled it whenever the uh, play first carried into their zone. Uh, obviously, the refs are gonna take a look at it here and see what they can figure out. It'll be a close one. Major changing point, or turning point, rather, in this game, whatever way this call goes. It's a great shot by Lalonde. You can see their good shot it's of the ref looking at what happened. The call on the ice is a goal. So Matt, if this stands, how, regardless of the outcome of this, what are your thoughts on the Colonials play over the past 10 minutes of game time, because at the tail end of that second period, they really started to pick things up, and they came out. And there was a short scrum. He came out. Yeah, you know, at the end of the second, the Colonials did definitely pick up their play. It's unfortunate that that uh, goal for the Huskies came whenever it did, because the Colonials were definitely picking up. And as you can see there on the replay, if you can, for our viewers, this is going to be a real close one down there. Nothing that I saw from those two angles that was conclusive to me. Big word there, Matt. Yes, as you give me the finger point. Conclusive is the key. We don't know what angles the referees have, however. And they're putting their helmets back on and coming back out of the ice. I and mean, it's a good goal, and the Colonials have tied this game up. And that is certainly going to affect the momentum of this game here, Mike. That goal was big, obviously. Earlier, the Huskies had one under review that was called off because the net was off. Uh, but the Colonials are lucky here. Their review stands. And the Colonials, with that little bit of a break, are going to send out the line of Lynch, Tanj, and Bear now. Trying to keep the offensive pressure on these Huskies for certain. Israel will dump it down deep. A lot of these guys on the power play, as well as Bear and Lynch, both hit the ice. But it's kept back in, cleared up to Lynch, but it's off his thigh pad and knocked down in the slot. But the Huskies will regain control back behind the net of Smith. Schultz, the man that was in the box, takes a shoulder from Lynch and he'll hit the ice. But the puck bounces around the neutral zone. Walker tips it in and he's pushed by Nolan Schaefer. Colonials continuing the physicality. Oh, this third period is going to be an absolute battle between these teams, Mike. Tied 2-2 right now. The next goal is big. And not even the next goal, but the next call to go one team's way. Changing the momentum. Anything can happen as of right now. Interception in the neutral zone by Mantenuto, and he'll try to work it back in for the Colonials, but it'll be taken by the Huskies. Good, Clear pinch, back good out. pinch there by Gerdukas. Gerdukas, of course, whose brother play, Abbott plays for RIT, an AHA opponent. Colonials will face again later this season. Coming up through the zone now is the Huskies with speed. Good defensive stick play by the Colonials to prevent those passes from going through. Noel nudges it along, it's taken. And a pass finds its way through, but unable to be contained. Battling for it on the wall is Adamo. Lalonde comes free and he'll dump it high off the glass. And out. Dumped into the far corner by St. Cloud. Colonials will gather it and regroup, work it back out to center ice, but no further than that. Delayed ice offsides now is 
Loria gets a nice little stretch pass to the blue line. Loria shot right into the chest protector of Smith. Quick chest there by Smith. Keeping this game tied. For Cusick battling now, sends a man to the ice. Taking it now for St. Cloud and working it up. It's Hammer. A lot of pressure from the Colonials so far this third period. I don't know what Coach Schooley said at the intermission, but it sure worked. Cusick in now giving chase. It's sent back to Bushy. Bushy carrying the puck now for St. Cloud. He'll dump it in deep. It's taken by Marat. Marat leaves it for Lalonde. It's banked. Nice job by Watt deflecting that one out of the zone. Meyer sends it across now to Bushy, who dumps it back in. Robert giving chase on the backhand around his own neck. Gets it up to Kyle Horseman. Horseman sending a pass, but it's knocked down by Jack Paling. Paling carrying it in. Passes to a teammate. Surveying his option. Shoots. Deflected off of Murat behind the cage. Nick Paling calling for the puck now. Shot deflected behind the cage. Off the skate of Lawson, that one. Knocked back down, and here comes a man. It's Fitzgerald, the man who scored the second goal for St. Cloud with the puck, but his pass is deflected. Gets it across, is paling again, looking for his brother's stick, but it goes wide of the cage. This one back, back around, Jack Paling shoved off by Hoffman, or excuse me, Lawson. Lawson. This one played by a high stick in the neutral zone, and we're gonna have a whistle. 13.57 going, or remaining in the period, Nice period of long play there. As you can see the hit there. Go back to that shot by Loria. Tried to go upstairs blocker side. Ended up getting Smith up in the shoulder area. Of that chest protector. Another good opportunity there. And great patience on both ends of the ice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mike Loria there on that shot. I'm not sure if he saw or not, but Nick Perkusik was doing a great job at filling in for the third forward in the zone, staying a little bit high and being open in the high slot. Uh, but still a great shot attempt by Loria. Certainly in the Penguins, or excuse me, the Colonials rather. Starting to pick things up in the offensive end. In the past. The, the, the tides have really tilted. We, we, we talked in the second period about how this was a looked like a one-sided game at points in favor of St. Cloud. But um, it, things have certainly balanced themselves back out. The face-off will be in the Robert Morris zone. And it will be Luke Lynch against Walker in the face-off circle. Teams approach the dot, and the puck is dropped. The Huskies will gain possession and pass wide open man in front of the net, but unable to connect on the pass where is St. Cloud. Good opportunity squandered away there. St. Cloud still applying some pressure, regaining entry into the offensive zone. Nolan Schaefer doing a nice job shoving his man away from the puck. Back out to the point. Couple of slick moves, nothing comes of it though. Pass across, oh, and chipped up. We have a goal for Robin St. Cloud State, and the Huskies have regained the lead. Nifty little shot there, comes to his stick, and he lofts it up over Murat. Yeah, you know, Mike, that play right there of an east to west pass from low one side right on the back door. Jackson wide open, chips it right over the Colonials defender and Marat, and it goes back into the net. Nothing that you can do about that if you're Francis Marat. Jackson, the senior from Almeida, California. Hits the Archer celebration there. As he helps his team gain the lead for the third time tonight. Question now with 13 minutes and change remaining. Can the Colonials, for the third time tonight, get the game tying goal? Marat sticks this one away. 
Adamo with it now. It's turned back around. McKellian battled there. Has a defender's arm around him. It was Noel applying pressure. Sends one to Mantenuto. Mantenuto cutting in now on his forehand. Jammed at the pad, but a nice save by Schmidt. Back up to Newell. Deflects off a stick in over to Israel in his offensive zone, who tries to find a pass to Lalonde. He has it. Sends it around hard to Perkusik. Perkusik with a goal on the night. Spinning and turning, pressured into the boards, two on one down low. And the Colonials will turn the puck over. It's set up to Newell in the neutral zone. He'll lay it off for Brodzinski. Brzezinski battling, getting the puck deep. It's gathered by Robert. Alex Robert sends it up, it's gloved down at the blue line. Keeping in St. Cloud. Robert trying to check his man off the puck. Backhander toward the cage, doesn't go through. And Loria will chip this one back out into the neutral zone. Circling back deep in his defensive zone was Wallen for the Huskies who takes a rough ride on the far boards. And we've said his name a lot tonight. Once again, throwing the body there was number three for the Colonials, Nolan Schaefer, using that big 6'3", 190 frame in the corners. Colonials now gearing up for another faceoff. Going to take the draw for Robert Morris. St. Cloud gains it, and they're going to send it across ice for Nick Paling, who backhands it down deep. Taken by Schaefer, but his pass for Coin doesn't get there. Nick Paling with it now. Schaefer trying to bully his man off the puck, but it passes up, and a dangerous little shot pass there ends up fluttering towards the cage. Schaefer, great job putting his man against the boards. It was Fitzgerald. Excuse me, that was McKellian laying the body. Coyne trying to glove the puck down. Neither team able to gain an advantage here, but it's the Huskies that emerge with a paling, a spinning shot, finds its way to Murat, but he makes the save and freezes for the whistle. 10.52 remaining in the third period, and a spinning effort from paling finds its way to Murat and he's able to cover up. And St. Cloud reverting to much of the same, very similar style of play that we saw in that second period. Lynch to take the drop for Robert Morris. He will lose it, and the Huskies gain control. Back deep now, a Husky falls to the ice. And the Colonials have it. Here comes Alex Tonj. Tonj trying to dump it in, looking for Ebert, but no dice. Miller has it now, gives it over to a man, and they lose the puck. And here comes Tonj again, circling around, driving towards the middle, cuts back, and a shot patted away by Smith. Ebert with the puck now. Switches off with McKellian. McKellian, a shot saved away by Smith. Muskies regather the puck there by Luke Lynch, number 28 for the Colonials. Schultz moves the puck up to Miller. Miller cutting into the middle. Sends it off to a teammate. Circling around the neck is Brzezinski. Brzezinski a spinning shot deflected up high. Still with the puck is St. Cloud and a wrister towards the cage blockered away by Marat. Adamo chasing, but he doesn't get to the puck first. St. Cloud still with the puck. Circling around was Newell up to the point to Meyer. Shot blocked away by the Colonials, and McKellian will grab it and send it up to Adamo, but it's off his stick. And Brzezinski tries to get it deep, but it's cut off by the Colonials. We're still chopping at the puck in the neutral zone. Adamo bumping down Brzezinski in the middle of the ice. Lawson now gives it over to Robert, who will dump it deep. Gathered by the Huskies. Meyer flips it up in the neutral zone where Lawson will take it and dump it back in behind the net of Smith. 
Huskies waiting behind their own goal, melting, melting the clock away. 8.45 remaining in this contest, unless there's extra hockey ahead of us. That's only if the Colonials just go up in a drive to the net. Good defense by Robert Morris, but a great drive by Benson of the St. Cloud Huskies. Unable to really get a good shot off, though. And the Colonials keep this one at a deficit of one. This one's chipped up for Cusick chasing in now. For Cusick pushed into the boards. He goes down to a knee. He comes out with the puck though. Finds a man. Shot save. Nice job by Smith as that one popped to the stick of Spalacy in the slot and he's able to shoot it. But it's in to the equipment of Smith in this game is still separated by one goal. Yeah, great job by Spalacy there, Mike, to find that soft spot in between the face-off dot and the hash mark on that right circle, Smith's glove side. And uh, good opportunity, just wasn't able to finish. Spalacy's done a nice job being slippery, if you will, in the offensive end, being able to find the, find the puck there in the tough spots. They converted once on one of his uh, takeaways, pilfering the puck away from the uh, Huskies in the uh, first period, which resulted in that Percusic goal. And with 8.17 remaining, time is starting. It's, it's, it's falling off quickly for the Colonials with just a one shot deficit, essentially, but they trail in the shot category by 11. Yeah, you know, one, one of those 11 shots matters to the Colonials and that's the one that gave St. Cloud the lead here. However, they've done it before, getting out shot and making an important shot into the net, and uh, we'll see if they can do that here and keep this game interesting. Lynch to take the draw for the Colonials. Ebert and Tonj to his sides. The Huskies win the draw and they'll dump it off the boards and back. Schaefer will retreat behind the goal of Marat and he'll stop. And his pass deflected up off a stick, glove down to Lynch, and he'll have to chop it to the red line. This one dumped back towards Marat. Israel giving chase, pressured by Nick Polit. Paling. Tanj finds Lynch. Lynch to Eber. Eber breaking free on a breakaway, just under the glove of Smith and wide of the cage. Eber looking for a call on that one as he felt he was hooked. The ref obviously having a different opinion. Back up to Eber. Tips this one in to Smith. Who will play it? Up to Schult, who sends this one up. It's tipped in. It's going to go all the way back to Marat. Pass off the boards. Bad pass. And it comes. <laughs> it's going to be Robbie Jackson again for his second goal on the night, second in a row. Unfortunate bounce off the boards. He takes it, finishes it five hole on the backhand. Four to two, St. Cloud. Great move in front, catches that pass, cuts across just to open up Murat's legs and backhand buries that one five hole. An unfortunate Karam doubles the lead for the Huskies. It's Jackson, I haven't had to say his name too, too much but has two goals tonight, certainly popping up when it matters most. Here's Miller now, and the Huskies are right back at it, up to Walker. Looking for Oshin. Oshin loses the puck, but regains it back in the neutral zone, circling around, surveying his options. He'll wrist one back around the boards. Loved down by Lalonde. The Colonials finally work the puck out of the zone. Perkusik will just dump it into some open space and it'll be gathered by the Huskies. This one banked behind the net of Smith. Lalonde does a good job checking his man off. Spalacy tried to get another steal, but the Colonials keep it in the zone. Spalacy behind the net again gets bodied off the puck nicely by number 25 for the Huskies. That was Nick Perbix a Tampa Bay Lightning product, or prospect rather. Huskies with the puck again. Mounting things up 
in the defensive end, and they'll just dump this one down into the Colonial zone and get a change of lines. The Huskies in this second half of the third period have really picked up looking like they did in the second period whenever they came out and got the jump on the Colonials again. Israel dumping this one in deep. Spalisi trying to keep it in the zone, but it's going to pop out. Adamo with it now. He'll find Israel. Over to Schaefer, and the Colonials are going to start an attack. Spalisi at the red line tips this one down deep to Smith. With it now are the Huskies trying to mount up yet another attack. This one cut off at the blue line by McKellian. It falls down, but it's played by a high stick, and the whistle blows with 5.15 remaining in the third period of play. Matt, time running out, two goal deficits similar to what we saw last night for the Colonials. Uh, Coach Derek Schooley made the decision to pull Marat with three minutes and change left with a two goal deficit. Do you see the same thing coming here if this, this remains, pulling him, which you thought was a little bit early last night? Yeah, last night it definitely took me by surprise to see Marat out of the net with so much time remaining, but it ended up working out for the Colonials as they netted the first one with the six on five man advantage. Um, so, you know, that would definitely be something that knowing that it worked yesterday would be a good basis to go off of if we know that the Colonials can score that goal if they have to with that man advantage. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised necessarily to see Marat come out of the net a little bit early. Uh, against St. Cloud though, I think that pulling the goalie is a very risky move as these players can obviously hit the net from anywhere on the ice. Well, it'll certainly come down if this deficit remains as is to Marat being pulled in exchange for the extra attacker. Eventually, it's only a matter of when rather than if it's going to happen at this point. That's assuming this deficit stays at two for the time being. Colonials with it now. Up to Eber. Eber with it, looking for Taj across. Pass was a little behind him. He had to field it on his backhand. And just flipped it into the corner where the Colonials lose possession. Big but hit nice by Luke Lynch in the corner. Yeah, Luke Lynch absolutely reefing his man into the boards there, taking him down. But the St. Cloud Huskies come back again. Pass tipped into the corner. Teams battle for it. Robert Morris emerges with the puck. It's McKellian looking up for Taj. Taj will poke it to Ebear in the middle. Ebear cutting, loses the puck. It's taken by St. Cloud and cleared out of the zone back. Israel will skate into the neutral zone. 4.25 remaining in this contest. It's dumped down deep. Taj pinching in, and we're gonna have a whistle here. And this one is gonna be blown dead with 4.21 remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, home, be sure to stay tuned in after this game. We have coverage of the championship of this Three Rivers Classic coming up next. Puck drop at eight o'clock. It'll be the Union College Dutchman taking on the Brown University Bears. It'll be a very interesting contest. Union came in yesterday, ranked number 14 in the country, was able to knock off these St. Cloud Huskies by a score of seven to two in that one. Puck out to the point, deflected. Huskies still pressuring late in this game. Perkusik with it now, carrying it out. He'll send it over to Mantenuto. Mantenuto over to Perkusik. Perkusik slides it toward the goal, but it's patted away by Smith. St. Cloud regains the puck, and the Colonials will dump it back into the zone. 3.55 remaining. This one cleared out into the middle of the ice. Israel with it now. He'll dump it in deep. I look over to the bench, I see Scully giving some instructions to Marat in his cage. But the Huskies are the ones with possession of the puck as this one is dumped deep. You know, the Colonials really are gonna have to get set up in the zone with good possession. And Marat before looks they to look be to heading to the bench now, Matt. And he's gonna have to return to his cage as the Huskies regain possession, or possession of the puck, rather. 3.20 remaining now. Colonials trail by two after two goals by Robbie Jackson. Here comes St. Cloud with speed, wrapping around the cage. 
Newell using his speed time and time again tonight. Shot off the pad of Murat. And here comes the, the Colonials. This one dumped in deep. Smith sends it around his net, but he turns it over to Tonge. Lynch battling. And this one cleared up to the point and dumped back deep. Marat out of his net, extra attacker on for the Colonials. Gloria cut off behind his cage. Taken by Schult, who'll sky it out to the neutral zone. This one across for Lynch, who is heading to the bench. Gloria able to stay on sides and chop this one deep. Colonials chasing hard. This one's cleared the length of the ice, and Paling's going to beat out Schaefer for icing. Nick Paling, excuse me. And the empty net shot wide of the goal. Is St. Cloud trying to get that empty netter? 2.15 left in this one. A couple of cracks there. Good speed by Paling. This one deflects off his skate. This will be handled back. Fanning actually on the clear is McKelly, and it'll be taking Fitzgerald applying pressure there. Colonial is able to regain possession. Up to Lalonde. Lalonde dumps it deep. Israel in again. Seeing him all over the ice tonight. This one will be cleared over. Paling. Paling shoots at the net from beyond his own red line, and it goes. <laughs> and unfortunately, it appears as though that might be the final nail in the coffin there for the Colonials. Paling putting that one right in the center of the net from his own half of the ice, almost from the other blue line. And just like that, the Huskies have increased their lead to five to two. Spalacy to take the draw for Robert Morris now. Colonials unable to come up with the puck cleanly after that one, but Perkusik able to rustle it off the defender. Perkusik shot into the glove of Smith and he'll snag it and hold on for, this, for the whistle. One thirty-five left in this one, Matt. The Colonials look to finish this one out. Up ahead for Robert Morris next weekend as the Colonials dance with the puck at the blue line. Perkusik with it now. He'll spin and dump it down deep and it'll be handled by the Huskies. Up next for the Colonials, they will have Bentley coming in next weekend. That'll be a home series for the Colonials back at the Island Sports Center. Colonials Arena, Neville Island, PA. Be good to be back at home, Matt. Oh, absolutely. They try to Nick. continue to climb up the rankings in the Atlantic Hockey Association. So this one is dumped deep, deflected in by Watt. This one will be bumped back out. Colonials entered this tournament. Third position in the conference. If I can recall correctly, Matt, they entered this season with, in uh, the coaches poll is being ranked in finishing third in the conference. Uh, in a media poll, they were picked to finish fourth. So they seem to be going right as some predicted. And they're very close to the top teams as well as Air Force is only a handful of points ahead is there's only 10 seconds remaining in this contest as Marat freezes this one off to his pad with 11.2 to go. Yeah, and you know, something else to still think of is the top four teams in the AHA actually make the conference tournament at the end. So if you get there, anything can happen from Well, that you just got to make it into the playoffs as the Colonial saw, did last year. I believe they entered the playoffs as a seventh seed and were still able to make it into Rochester after the playoff tournament there, the semifinals, which they were able to beat Mercyhurst in overtime and before eventually falling to Air Force in the conference championship game. is a big hit there late, and we have a whistle. Is Lawson decks a man down into the board. Scary play there, and he's struggling to get up. And the, with 5.1 seconds left, you hate to see it, and they're calling the trainers out onto the ice. Dangerous play there. And down on the ice 
for St. Cloud is number 21, Jake Wallen. And Lawson's gonna head off into the locker rooms early. An extremely scary play there, back to the wall in the hit there. Like I was saying, Matt, they're in great position right now in the conference, this RMU team. Seven, six, and one in Atlanta hockey play. Air Force and AIC ahead of them. They squared off with AIC their last time out. They lost the first game by a score of four to three, but were able to bounce back and win three to one in their in the closing half, that Sunday game there on the road. Bentley, this will be the first time that Robert Morris has played them this season. They have a Friday 7.05 start, and then a on Saturday, an interesting 4.05 evening game. Following that, they will travel to up, upstate New York. They'll be on the road for a few weeks. January 18th and 19th, they will go off to take on the Canisius Golden Griffins on a Friday-Saturday series. Before, and then the weekend after that, major weekend for Robert Morris. Going all the way out to Colorado. They will take on January 25th and 26th, the Air Force Falcons. For facing off against Air Force for the first time since falling in the conference tournament championship last year. As Wallen slowly gets up and makes his way back to the Huskies bench here. Very excited for that game, for those games, Matt, as Robert these Robert are teams are two. Five minutes for checking behind the game is Two powerhouses in Atlantic Lassa. hockey. And the call is on the ice. Five minutes in a game misconduct for Lawson for checking from behind. 5.1 seconds left. And you, you just hope that Wallen is okay. Would hate to see a player injured for a lengthy period of time with just five seconds left in a three goal game. That being said, the Colonials and the Huskies will take this draw. It'll be Mantenuto. Unfortunately, he can't capture it for the Colonials. Meyer will dump it below Murat's goal, and the whistle will sound, and this one will end by a final score of 5-2 in favor of the St. Cloud State Huskies over the Robert Morris University Colonials. You know, they came into this tournament number one in the nation. They're leaving number third place here at the Three Rivers Classic. Good job from both teams tonight in this consolation game. And ladies and gentlemen, be sure to tune in again later. Eight o'clock puck drop. It'll be the Union College, or the, yes, the Union College Dutchman versus the University, or the Brown University Bears in the championship game of this Three Rivers Classic. I'd like to thank everybody for helping out on this broadcast. On the streaming end, Dakota Lamb. On the radio side, Malik Johnson. I'm Michael Shuley alongside me, Matt Simcoe. Thank you all for watching. Your final score, St. Cloud 5, Robert Morris 2.